Remembering the first game of the sport. And the Scarlet Knights brace for an innovation of Jim Levitt's second ranked USF Bulls. These guys are new to wearing the big target, carrying the pressure of a national title contender. And they've already been serenaded tonight by the Rutgers students. Are they overrated? Are they that good? The nation wants to know. We'll begin to find out tonight. Number two, South Florida visits Rutgers in Jersey. You will not find two more intense coaches. There's Jim Levitt running wind sprints. Greg Schiano, he's got that look in his eye. He was in Levitt's position a year ago, flirting with perfection. These days, Rutgers has two losses, and this is must-win time on College Football Primetime, presented by Applebee's in the heart of the Scarlet Knights here in Jersey. And in rolls number two, undefeated South Florida. The BCS standings came out this weekend right after mighty Ohio State since South Florida unranked in the preseason much like number three Boston College but wait a second this is very early in the Big East campaign USF has only played one conference game so a long way to go five games after tonight they're just getting into the teeth of their conference schedule but this test at Rutgers perhaps looms as the largest test remaining for this team Rutgers known as a very loud and hostile place to visitors. Welcome, Chris Fowler, Doug Flutie, Craig James. Should be a lot of fun tonight. This was the setting a year ago of pandemonium in Piscataway as Rutgers took down number three Louisville. Now in comes number two USF, an extraordinary story, and people around the country want to know, is this team really that good. They're a serious title contender if they can keep it going. Well, I tell you what, if their blood pressure and their adrenaline is flowing like ours is, they better slow down out there right now because this is a game where they really have to focus that bullseye that's on their chest. I don't think the players, fortunately, at South Florida really realize where they are. I don't think they understand that they're the number two team in the country. So that's good for them, but they got to settle down and execute football. Well, by not understanding it and being protected from it, They've been able to focus on this game, and it's a very important game for them. Can they stay at number two? Do they deserve to be there? They've beaten West Virginia. They've beaten Auburn. I feel they deserve to be there. They've got a very athletic defense. They fly around. I feel they deserve to be in a number two spot. It's a good debate. We'll get into it tonight. You know, Matt Grothy is the face and the haircut of this USFL team. The sophomore quarterback wearing that mohawk under the helmet does a little bit of everything. He really does. He's their playmaker. He's their go-to. He does it with his feet as well as his arm. And a lot of time he scrambles to pass and to make that big play down the field as well as have the ability to tuck it under and go on his own. Well, you know, he doesn't do it on his own and neither does the offense. They get the ball back a whole lot because their defense swarms. Swarming bulls in the pasture means getting the football <laughs> back. And George Selby over on defense is a guy who plays beyond the line of scrimmage. 21 and a half plays behind the line of scrimmage. That's unbelievable. This is a defense that averages three and a half sacks a game. So, I mean, they're going to take the ball away, and, and that's going to get the ball back to Grothy and company. I'm telling you, watch this defense. I'm very impressed with the way they play with speed on defense. That sack total for Selby, 11 and a half. That's more than 67 teams in college football have so far this season. But if you can't run around him, you can run right at him, and that's what Ray Rice and Rutgers wants to do. Rice had a monster game against these guys a year ago, 202 yards. Right at him or right over him. Ray Rice is a guy that has power throughout his body. He gets better as the game goes on. And his confidence that he and his offensive line can go between the tackles in this football game and win is what we're going to see. That's the battle of the game, the will of two teams. Defense against Ray Rice's legs. Well, the South Florida defense is going to try to make him go east and west. Obviously, Rutgers wants to go downhill. Ray Rice is a force. But if they bring those safeties down and try to take away that running game, Mike Keel can still throw the ball. He's doing a much better job this year of putting the ball up and going down the field with weapons. So I like the well-balanced attack of Rutgers. Exactly. Not a one-dimensional attack. Rice has had kind of a quiet year. Expects to bust out tonight. He was drawing with some of the Bulls players in the warm-up down on the field. Down on the field is Aaron Andrews, the Tampa native, who fully <laughs> understands how big this USF story is getting. Well, Chris, the USF coaches have a message for all those critics and naysayers. 
keep the talk coming. And you know what that talk is that these Bulls aren't worthy of that number two ranking in the BCS. Well, these players are listening. And with this national audience tonight, they're looking forward to proving a couple of things. One, they're deserving of that ranking. And number two, they've joked all week long that, hey, this audience is probably going to tune in and check out that team from South Florida down in Miami. Well, they want to prove this team from South Florida is from Tampa. And speaking of Tampa, quite a party down on USF's campus right now over at the Sun Dome. They've opened it up and allowed everybody within the community who wants to come in, watch the game, cheer for the Bulls, and put on a good show. We're going to be checking in with them all night long. Chris? And the bandwagon is enormous and it's going fast, but there's nothing but red in this house in New Jersey. The Bulls and the Scarlet Knights, a crucial game of the Big East and the national landscape. Coming up, let's go back to Reese in the studio first. Reese. All right, Chris, this will be one running of the Bulls where no one's diving for fences. I imagine the Scarlet Knights will stand right in there alongside Robert Smith, who's sitting in for Lou Holtz. Lou will be back with us on Friday. My partner, Mark May, glad to have you along. Chris and the guys, fellas, were talking about the BCS standings, whether it was a worthy debate about where South Florida should be at number two, maybe even higher. These are the initial BCS standings. Couple of notes, maybe not the greatest news for Ohio State. Only twice since the advent of the BCS in 1998 has the Initial number one actually won the title. South Florida, Kentucky in the standings for the first time. Boston College and Arizona State had their highest rankings ever. And by the way, on the subject of Boston College, Jeff Jagodzinski is going to join us at halftime here with BC having the week off. Guys, here's what I want to do. I want to take a couple of blind resumes and you tell me, based on the numbers, who you think ought to be number one. Team A has two wins against the top 20. Team B has none. Turnovers forced. Team A has the edge there. Schedule strength also huge advantage for the first team. So based on those numbers, who should be number one, Robert? Uh, Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark? Obviously, it's Team A. It's Team A, and as we show you which team is which, South Florida Bulls with the edge the one, on paper the, against Ohio now State. Now when it right. says wins versus the top 20, wasn't Purdue in the top 20 when Ohio State played them? They were not. They, they were in not. the top they 25. Were top 25, okay. but not in the top 20. Okay, so that's but why they, both that's of why the wins for South them. Florida. It's a fair point, but both of the wins for South Florida are against teams who are still currently ranked. That is not the case for Ohio State right now. Yeah, but when we look at that, we look at the Auburn game. People say they won against Auburn. They won against West Virginia. They were plus five in the turnover ratio against Auburn, and it still took them to overtime to win that ball game. West Virginia had 200 yards more offense in that game, minus two in the turnover ratio in that game. So you can't just say, well, they beat Auburn, they beat West Virginia, they deserve the number one ranking. And I'm gonna ask you guys, would you have voted them number one, or, or would you have voted them ahead of Ohio State if that number one spot hadn't been vacated? Yes. Okay. And here's the bottom line. You just gave all the correct answers. It does not matter what the stats and what the numbers are. They won at Auburn. They beat West Virginia. It doesn't matter if you go into a game. Look at UCLA and Notre Dame. Seven turnovers. UCLA was ranked. Notre Dame wasn't. Notre Dame wins the football game. Bottom line is the best way to test a true opponent against another opponent in any championship form is head to head. They beat Auburn at Auburn. They beat West Virginia at home. If you look at their body of work and their resume, they've been outstanding this year in finishing games. If you look at their competition, compared to Ohio State's competition, it's not even close. They have the 31st ranked schedule against opponents versus Ohio State's 73rd rank. So obviously, they played a tougher schedule. Let me ask you this. You didn't even answer let me, that let question. Me ask, let me ask you this. If the graphic was up there, you wouldn't answer the question. Let me, let it me was ask A you this. or B. You let, said Ohio State. Let me ask you this. If USC doesn't lose to Stanford, they, they, uh, Stanford doesn't convert on that 4th and 20, they don't convert on 4th and 9 score there, you're going to vote USF ahead of them? Because who is, yes. who is USC's? Oh, USC oh come on now. Come USC on. lost. I, if the, USC the body lose. of work. I said if and USC I've been, I've USC I said if, if USC didn't lose, okay, then who was their big win against? Nebraska? Yeah, at that time. So, US, so, USF, so USF had better wins tell than me, USC. So you're me, telling me that. Right, right, here's one, one quick question that I wanted to answer from both of you. Real quick question. If South Florida wasn't South Florida and you put the Nebraska logo on there or you put the, the Ohio State or the Texas, they would be number one and there wouldn't Bingo. be a question. 
I, I think you're right. I mean, and, you, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But on the subject of Nebraska, uh, the Cornhuskers, they are reeling. Children of the Corn in complete disarray. The latest debacle of 45-14 loss to Oklahoma State that resulted in the unceremonious sacking of athletic director Steve Peterson and the return of the patron saint of modern Nebraska football, Tom Osborne. He is the athletic director. He will decide the future of Bill Callahan. That is, if you assume this is not already a foregone conclusion with the way things are going in Nebraska. There were some who felt in the Nebraska hierarchy that Peterson had tied himself entirely too closely to Callahan and thus could not be objective about the future. So what's next for Nebraska? Well, I think you have to make a move like this at this time of the year. You have to show the recruits that you're doing something. People that are thinking about going to Nebraska, even though there's going to be some uncertainty, Callahan's probably not going to be back. You know that this program is headed in a different direction because they've made that move. I mean, a very quick move, obviously, after a, a very significant loss. And they, they made that change. They, they know that they're moving in a different direction now. It's already gone. It's a foregone conclusion. The bottom line is Bill Callahan called Mayflower Movers because you're not going to be there after this season. It doesn't matter if you finish out and run the table. You don't make the, the Big 12 championship game by putting Tom Osborne in this position at this point in time it is done he is not going to be back the culture is going to be changed back to the old ways in Nebraska when they were successful look for them to bring in a bowl Pelini he had great success there the black shirt defense they're not even wearing the black shirts anymore in Nebraska they want that tough defense back they're going to bring back a bowl Pelini type or a Turner Gill type at Buffalo and they're three and four right now <laughs> you've won three games at Buffalo that ought to help your resume no matter what you know, uh, I think there's a little bit of irony in the fact that Nebraska plays Texas A&M, who also has an embattled coach in Dennis Franchoni. We'll talk much more about that over the course of the weekend. You know what, Mark, you hit on something about where would you evaluate South Florida if they wore a different headgear? Well, I can tell you where one guy would. The Harris Poll voter, Eddie Crowder, the former Colorado coach, was quoted this week saying he hadn't seen one clip of video of South Florida, and if it came down to a vote between South Florida and LSU, he would likely give the nod to the Tigers because they have been better stabilized for the last 100 years. I, I, look, I hope Eddie's watching because if you're going to make this kind of vote, I think you ought to at least have some informed perspective. You guys have informed perspective on this game right now that's coming up between South Florida and Rutgers tonight. And, and for Eddie, I have to tell you, South Florida is not in South Florida University. It's in Tampa, like middle of the state, just to let you know. But the South Florida defense has been outstanding this season. Obviously, George Selvey at the defensive end position, the 11 and a half sacks, they make big plays, not only up front Ben Moffat, the linebacker, but their two corners are outstanding, probably the best in the state of Florida and the best in the conference. But what's impressive to me about this team. It doesn't matter who they play. They're physical, they're dominant, they know how to stop people, and they find ways to win on defense. Yeah, they have found ways to win on defense, but when you look at that offense, is it going to come up short? When you look at this Rutgers offense this season, everybody knew about Ray Rice. Obviously, Brian Leonard's gone, but you look at the development of Mike Teal and that passing game, not making the dumb mistakes, the mistakes that cost you ball games. Tyquan Underwood, Kenny Britt, those receivers. The problem with a South Florida team that, that tries to win by defense but has had off or inconsistent offensive play, if they fall down early, they could be in trouble. So, you know, if South Florida wins this game, will you get a, a, a grow hawk? A little haircut grow hawk? <laughs> <laughs> I'll get, yeah, one of those balding cap ones. Not, not a real one, though. I'm, South, I'm past those. It might not grow back. South Florida is one of six remaining undefeated teams in the country. Another one sitting back and watching this weekend, Boston College. And joining us at halftime, BC's new head coach, Jeff Jagodzinski. That's a pretty good start for Jags, undefeated thus far. We'll talk to him about his club. They're playing next Thursday night. But for the third time this season, the most important game in the history of South Florida football. Football. It comes on the road against Rutgers. Two different seasons, two different books, two different reads, yet the same story. The book on the Scarlet Knights was written and labored over piece by piece for more than a century. Then last season, the pride of Piscataway finally became a bestseller. This football team chopped for 60 minutes. We said it was going to take 60 minutes. By golly, you guys brought 60 minutes. The novel that is South Florida is a quick read about a decade-long meteoric rise to prominence. This season, the Bulls have put their own spin on speed reading. Dorothy, how did he get away? Now he has man wide open. It is caught. Caught 
Mitchell, touchdown! The biggest win in the history of this 11-year-old Bulls football program. Two stories, one located in the north of the Sunshine State, yet named South Florida. The other situated in the Garden State, but embraced by the Tri-State. Sit back and relax. It's time to read a good book. Number two, USF versus Rutgers, now. And here come the Scarlet Knights for decades a doormat. They really arrived last season. Expectations very high this season at four and two. They consider this must win. They're the spoiler, the favorite, the number two team in the BCS, the USF Bulls. And that is a display of team speed as Jim Levitt, who was there from the beginning, the humble beginnings of this program in Tampa when it was situated in three trailers long before it was 1A before it was part of a BCS conference. Greg Schiano, the defensive-minded coach of Rutgers. He's also the defensive coordinator looking for his defense to step up tonight, stop the bleeding after a couple of home losses this season to Maryland and Cincinnati. And Jim Levitt doing his best to downplay all the hype and the expectations and the pressure. They don't even refer to the BCS ranking. They just call it the situation. Have you ever seen a head football coach before the game run from sideline to sideline sprints trying to get rid of emotions and energy? Not I'm many. Never, I'm not, and Levin was. He was running gassers before the game moments ago. The intensity of both coaches during pregame was, was amazing. I mean, we wanted to suit up and go play. They were not interested in, in conversation, were they? They wanted to work off that nervous energy. That's it. You see him. There he goes. <laughs> I mean, he was all over the What's field. What's his 40 time? Today, he was down in the 4-8 range. Fast as he's ever been. Now he's got a lot of guys that are a lot faster than that, fortunately, especially in that defense. And it's going to be that USF speedy defense trying to slow down Ray Rice. Rutgers will get the football to begin. They won the toss and elected to receive. Full house here tonight. Possibility of a record crowd. It was a brand new phenomenon a year ago, a big primetime game. Now these folks say they're getting used to it. Justin Tichy to kick off. And he'll boot it out of the end zone. So Rutgers will start on their 20-yard line. Quarterback is Mike Teal. Craig said it. Vastly improved passer in this his junior year. Only had 100 yards throwing against the Bulls in last year's Rutgers victory on the road. Now 300-yard games are the norm. Well, I think it's a pretty simple, basic game plan here. Can Ray Rice run between the tackles? And that play action opens up, Doug. Can they hit him down the field? Yeah, Teal's averaging 300 yards passing. He's throwing the ball much better this year. If they suck up in there to, to stop the run, the passing game will be there. You've got dangerous receivers, Underwood and Brett, on the same side of the formation, bottom of the screen. And, of course, Ray Rice is the tailback. Now, Underwood in motion. And it's Rice. Has room. Ray Rice. We're about 15 before Trey Williams dragged him down. There's a flag on the play. Did they grab the face mask of Rice? There's a penalty by each team on the play. Holding. Number seven. Offense. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 21 defense. He's fouls offset. Replay first down. So the hold on the receiver Underwood and the face mask wipes out a 15 yard gain. And I'm not sure that South Florida's defense nor Greg Schiano expected to get Ray Rice around the corner in this football game. South Florida's defense is built around speed and they want Ray Rice. They're going to try to push him east and west. Very few backs if any have success running east and west on this speedy defense. Doug said 14 straight games no hundred yard rusher since Rice got him big last year in Tampa. And redo first and ten and Rice has room again barreling straight ahead. That's more of a Ray Rice run. And he gets nine yards and Pat Manning the equipment manager for Rutgers introduces you to the offense. In my 31 years at Rutgers University football as the equipment manager I've never come across a more explosive bunch of offensive players. Our offensive linemen Jeremy Zuda, Mike Fladell and Pedro Sosa. Our wide receivers, Kenny Britt and Tyquan Underwood, and of course, everybody's favorite, number 27, Ray Rice. We thank Pat and Monster.com for the lineup. Second and two. No 
front. Teal all over the middle. Fires high and caught by Kenny Britt near midfield. Nate Allen defending a 21 yard gain. And Pat St. Louis, the ex Bulls player, and now the GA introduces you to this defense. And for the fastest defense in the nation, leading the way is George Selby, the sack master, and that linebacker we have. Bruce Montpremier, Tyrone McKenzie, and the team captain, Ben Moffitt. And that defensive back, we have Nate Allen, Golden Child, Carlton Williams, and also platinum status at the cornerbacks, Trey Williams and Mike Jenkins. You might be a little biased, but fastest defense in the nation? We'll talk about that. First down throw for Teal. It's a screen. Incomplete. Rice had fallen down and had to be careful there because defensive players were all around, and Bruce Montpremier in the neighborhood, and Ben Moffitt, the active middle linebacker. He's their leader on defense in the middle. He makes plays. He lines his defense up. He, he's had interceptions. We think fastest in the nation, though. This I, I, that jury's well, out on that. They are fast and they are an upfield. Well, let me tell you what the jury was for me in evaluating the speed of this was against West Virginia. White and Slayton and Bunch out there. They tell you right now, South Florida's got a very fast defense. Held Slayton a 54 yards rushing, knocked Pat White out of the game. It's Rice on second and ten. Runs through the arm tackle of Selby, but a two yard gain. I think Rutgers has to be very encouraged with what they did on their first two plays, even though they had a holding penalty. They ran an off tackle power play that one of them bounced outside for a big gainer, and one Selby went up on inside stop. for a big gainer. So they're establishing what they want to do. And obviously, for South Florida, it's all about Ray Rice and stopping him. And they've done it the last 15 games. They have not allowed one to crack the 100 yard mark. Since Ray Rice did. And then Kevin Smith of UCF came in as the nation's leading rusher a week ago. Got just 55 yards on the Bulls. Third and eight. Rutgers has been better in these situations this year. Teal fires. Incomplete. He was looking for Kenny Britt. And he was very well covered by the future NFL corner Mike Jenkins. Jared Blue on the pressure. And Rutgers will have to punt. Both these South Florida corners, Mike Jenkins and Trey Williams, are exceptional corners. They trust these two to be one-on-one -on -one all day so they can commit some people to the run. They do an excellent job. And Rutgers has good receivers now, Craig. By far the best tandem in the conference, I think. And Jeremy Ita, who does all of the kicking duties, kicking off field goals and punting, will try to pin the Bulls deep. It's a fake. He's throwing downfield complete. Caught for a first down inside the 15 by James Townsend. How do you do, Coach Ciano? There's a punter with a good arm. Well, I guess when you're at home and you have confidence in your running game and where you are on the field right here, this is all planned. And this is a case where the cover man just never looks around. Well, he's expecting the guy to go down there and cover a punt, so he's going to get in position to block. Ito throws the ball. Usually, you don't throw the ball in this situation unless the guy is completely uncovered. Great throw by That's Ito. That's a lot of moxie in a big game at midfield. And now Riker is set up at about the 14-yard line. Rice on the toss. Yeah, it's tough to get outside. Moffitt, the senior, the leader of this defense, out there to get a hand on the ankle. I guess trying to get in the head of Shiano and making that call. He's playing the number two team in the country. He's lost a couple of games. He's sending a message to his team, fellas. We're here tonight. We're the underdogs. And we're here to win. We're here to make play. We're going to have to make some plays that maybe we don't usually make to make sure we win this game. You got a punter who throws like that. You've got to fear it now. <laughs> Teal in the shotgun for the first time. It's Rice. Has the corner. Ray Rice headed for the pylon and pulled out of the two. Rice, big thick guy, but he shows the acceleration. Trey Williams pushes him out. 11-yard gain. The acceleration you're talking about is something that most people just don't know much about with Ray Rice. Most people think that he's just tackle to tackle, but look at the leverage on the outside and the freedom to get there. Trey Williams, 21, can run. You know, the, the blocks on the edge weren't really good crack or seal blocks. They just out leveraged the defense right away, and Ray Rice ran around the corner. First and goal. Power formation. Rice. Hit in the backfield, dropped for a loss. Once again, Ben Moffitt, number 59. Interesting story. Moffitt 
married in high school and has a couple of kids already and commutes about 45 minutes from his home to the campus of USF. He's a defender down on the field. The medical staff for the Bulls will run out to attend to number 95 George Selby. We talked about him nation's leading sacker. That would be a tremendous loss. Selby just a sophomore. He's a guy that in 17 career games or 19 career games has 17 sacks points <laughs> to his back there and, and you know. Those sacks means that he has a high motor. But we asked the coaching staff, is this just a, a freak of nature? And Chris, you asked him, you said, hey, is this guy just, you know, Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator, he's an old Florida State guy, been around a lot of great players back there. You asked him about him. Yeah, and he said, no, he's not really a bullware type physical freak. He, he credits Selby's ability to study tape and get to know the opposing tackles and really the fact that their scheme will move him around in different positions. Yeah, they'll stunt with him, scheme with him, move him around, get him in mismatches, and that's how he's getting his sacks. It's not just that pure speed around the edge. So Rice dropped for a one yard loss on first and goal. They're set up at the three, the tenth play of this opening drive. They've been one of the more efficient teams in the country in the red zone. Second in scoring percentage. Touchdown percentage not quite as good. Underwood in motion. Rice again. Hammering straight ahead and nothing there. On second effort, Rice is able to come up with a short game before Mom Premier stopped him. So third and goal. You know, the reason they're good in the red zone is because they can run the ball down here. And Ray Rice is built low to the ground, thick legs. You saw his squad yesterday, Craig. He made a switch of quarterback, guys. Jabu Lovelace, the backup quarterback, a sophomore, very talented guy from Teaneck. He's a guy that can be an effective runner in the red zone. Interesting that you would bring Teal out and Ray Rice out of the game on the same play here, third and goal. And now Rutgers, it took some time to get the proper personnel in the game, and so a timeout is called. We're set up. Crucial play in the early going when you come back. Nigh above Scataway, New Jersey, opening drive for the Scarlet Knights who've marched at 78 yards with the help of a 36-yard fake punt completion. Now it's third and goal, and there is Jabu Lovelace, the backup quarterback. The red zone running weapon. Rice not in the backfield. Lovelace is going to throw. Pressure. And sacked at the eight yard line. So Tyrone McKenzie, the linebacker, not fooled. The wrinkle doesn't work. And from first and goal at the two, Rutgers will not have to try a field goal. And I'm sure what they were trying to do is to get the added block or get the mismatch on the numbers on the corner. But I imagine, Doug, the one thing the coach would tell him to do is throw that ball away and save the yards. It was actually a, it was like the Tebow play where it was a fake run. He wanted to pull up and hit the tight end in the back of the end zone, but he got jammed and then off the scramble took the sack. So Ito, again, who completed that fake punt pass, now on for the more familiar duty, the 26 yard field goal. Eight for eight inside 40 yards this season. Still perfect. So Rutgers chews up almost five minutes on the clock. And is it 72 yards? Levitt's team fooled by the fake punt, but not by the wrinkle at the goal line. We welcome you to a very significant game, not just in the Big East, but also in the national championship chase. Number two team in the new BCS standings down three nothing. What you call it an evaluation game? People around the country, you know, uh, South Florida. Who are they? I think everybody got a little bit of feel for Rutgers last year. Absolutely. I mean, everyone wants to see who this team is. They're number two in the country. We've never heard of them. We've never seen them. It's a national audience. Here's their showcase night, and they're going to be evaluated by everybody. Now, Jim Lev is pretty quick to say this is not our first good team. You know, back, back in 02, we were nine and two. The losses were at Arkansas at Oklahoma, nine and four last year, and they've had some success against ranked teams in their brief history, but they have never really worn the target. They've never really been the hunted. This is the new experience for them. I'll give you an answer here as to how you start evaluating when your defense has to go right back on the field and answer the call from a big play on a fake punt 
and they keep them out of the end zone. That's that's a championship style defense. It appeared that Rutgers were going to take that and shove it right on down into the end zone. And USF, you know, closed the gate. Three-point lead. That's a win for them once they got in that situation. Now the Bulls normal kickoff return man, Jerome Murphy, a, a Jersey guy, sitting out the first half. He missed a team meeting today, so he's not back there. And the ball rolls out of bounds. Torres Johnson doesn't feel it. It's been a problem. Kickoffs have not been a strength for Ito. Again, he does heavy duty. So we'll see what the Bulls want to do. Kick off out of bounds. On the kick to Five yard penalty. Great kick. Thank you to move it back to the 25 yard line. You know, you went down the field primarily with the running of Ray Rice. You did get the trick play off the fake punt. But I question taking your quarterback out and going with a gadget type play down on the goal line when you have Ray Rice in the backfield. Even if you're not going to run the ball there, the threat of Ray in the backfield could, could open a play action pass or something else. And, you know, I, I, take, I get the impression Shiano figured, you know what, I went for it on the fake punt. Let's go with the gadget play on the goal line. A guy that would probably agree with that would be Ray Rice. You know? Yeah, they had Jack Corker in the fullback lined up next to Lovelace. Not number 27. <laughs> Selby. Appears to be okay. We'll keep a close eye on the nation's sack leader. And now Ito, who hasn't managed to produce a touchback the entire year, will have to kick it from the 25 yard line. Well, you reload and you ask that cover team to sell out and go 100% again. That's where these big plays occur. You break down, you don't get off a block, and get back in your lane. Jamar Taylor, the freshman running back. He's back with Torres Johnson on the kickoff return. Apparently, oh. Ito wasn't happy with the football. It's <laughs> all right. Out there. Oh. The kickers are amazing. I tell you what, oh. they, they don't go to all the meetings. They're not. They, they got their 10 minutes in practice, and they're finicky about the color of a team hey, or the man, height of a, a team. He's a hero, right? He's the guy that beat Louisville last year with that field goal. Uh, do whatever he wants. He's going to get the ball he wants. Yeah, that's the kind of move that they'll get you taken. Oh, the this, is, this is the helium ball. That's <laughs> what it is. Well, he needs all the help he can get to avoid a big kickoff return and get this thing near the end zone. And this is Torres Johnson at the 12-yard line. Johnson gets outside, gets across the 35. So the Bulls will have good field position, their first possession, trying to answer the points. And there is the sophomore quarterback, Matt Grothy. Lakeland, Florida, just an old hunting and fishing guy. Yeah, he's uh, got a little hunting trip coming up. Man after my own heart. He's he knows he's going to go bow hunting for deer to, you know, tomorrow. Well, you know, getting all geared up after this game here, he's excited. He's looking forward to the trip. But but he's going to fly back to Tampa and then fly up to Ohio. Yeah, with, with Eric Setzer, there he is, the long snapper. He's going to go up to Richmond, Ohio, near Columbus. But he's, he's hunting Scarlet Knights tonight. And it's Ben Williams. The junior to the right of Grothy in the Bulls' first play. Three on the play clock. And he has to spend a timeout. Had to spend a timeout to avoid a flag on their first play. It got loud. Uh, that's that all that is is the checks and the looking to the sideline and getting the audibles from the sideline and relaying messages and I think I've, I've made my point of view pretty clear on that well and and obviously too we watched Greg Schiano yesterday coach up his defense and he gave a ton of different calls and stem fronts out there so maybe there was a different look that Rutgers brought to them these guys met a year ago down in Raymond James City it was a thriller it came down to the final play Grothy at that point was a freshman. He made some mistakes in that game. But Ray Rice was the story, just pounding straight ahead. And, and you know what? And that took the heart out of that South Florida defense. You know, Ray Rice is a guy who left a message and a mark on this defense two times in a row now. So South Florida is not a flashy, dashy offense, but Grothy finds a way. Saw Jason McCourty break up that two point conversion that would have tied it. This is Ben Williams, a nice gain on first down. Pat St. Louis is back with the Monster.com USF offensive lineup. And now for the Bulls starting offensive lineup, we have Walter Walker, Ryan Smith, and that receiver we have Torres Johnson, Amari Jackson, 
and Mark is up with. At tight end, there's Silver Kill, running back Ben Barbecue Williams, and at quarterback, Matt Joe Montana Grover. Williams on second and two. Can't quite get the corner, but does get a first down before Maso Munoz, the middle linebacker, drags him down. Munoz with the tackle. Munoz, one of those first year starters at linebacker. Gianna really misses. Quintero Frierson, Devron Thompson, he had a couple of veteran linebackers with the heart and soul of the defense. It's been tough to replace those guys from growing pains this year. Well, and, and really trying to make sure that they keep an eye on Matt Grothy and know where he is at all times to keep leverage and make him funnel to the inside. On first down, empty backfield. Ben Williams, the tailback in motion to the near side now. Grothy wants to throw. It's caught short in by Marcus Edwards. And once again, Pat Manning, equipment manager, to introduce us to the Scarlet Knights defense. To the defense of Rutgers football, the heart and soul of our defense, Eric Foster. Our linebacker, Brandon Rankart. Our defensive backs are twins, Jason and Devin McCourty, and of course, Courtney Green. All players are in love the equipment manager. Almost four decades of service to Rutgers football. Murphy on second and six. Fires near flat caught first down yardage for Courtney Denson only his fourth catch of the year hard to key in on any one receiver they spread the ball around a lot but you know what you have to be careful of if you're Rutgers defense tonight there's been so much stress and emphasis placed on knowing where growth he is on the field that you become passive a little bit well when you hesitate and start thinking about what you're supposed to do and responsibilities it slows you down these last two plays they blitzed them but dropped people out into a zone we expect lots of design runs for Grothy tonight. That's been the pattern. And the guy that's rushed for 346 yards, carried it 81 times this year. Hands it off to Jamar Taylor, and the true freshman is hit for no game. They'll rotate backs as well. We've seen Ben Williams. We'll see Mike Ford, the talented freshman, and Jamar Taylor right there. Whoever's got the hot hand will get the bulk of the carries. Well, their offense is designed around a lot of different players. And, you know, we'll get into their offensive coordinator and what he talks about, how they do it. But it's a system that is designed for a bunch of guys. Mike Ford is a running back, but the inside guys tell us, hey, watch out for this guy. He's the best player they have in the backfield. Five receivers for Grothy on second and ten. Over the middle, caught. Again, a short gain, and that's Marcus Edwards. Only four catches on the year coming in, so they're using some you know, lesser used weapons in the early going. Eight yard gain, sets up third and short. You know, Rutgers is mixing up their looks defensively. They dropped off in some blitz zones, and that time they, they ran a standard zone. Here's your comparison with total yards so far. It's yards per game, which is amazing with South Florida offense. Williams is the back on third and two, and he gets it. Hit immediately. Brandon Rankert, the linebacker, stops him for no gain. Fourth down. This is a setup system right now. They're trying to get Matt Grothy the football. Eventually, they're going to fake that, and Grothy's going to run. We don't see them not using Grothy that often. No, he's their leading rusher as well as the guy they rely on, in the, obviously, in the passing game when he moves around. But a lot of these runs are designed quarterback runs and a lot of the play action stuff that he's reading. And now it's Delbert Alvarado for 47 yards. Here's the guy that missed four field goals in a big win against Auburn, but kicked them into overtime with a clutch kick. He's been pretty solid since that Auburn game. And he's very solid there. So each team, one possession, each drive producing a field goal, and the Bulls frenzied out of the Sun Joe enjoys that. 3-3 three, three in Piscataway. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. Introducing Applebee's new Ultimate Trios. Great taste, great big portions, and a great price. Choose three from seven delicious options to create your ultimate flavor fest. Like our famous boneless chicken wings and classic buffalo sauce. Our new 100% Angus beef mini bacon cheeseburgers. And the new Tuscan cheese spread with toasted ciabatta bread. Ultimate Trios, ultimate platter at an unbeatable price. Only at Applebee's. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. Vegas is incredible. There's a, a casino in every hotel. Oh, yeah? 
And the people are so nice. Today, I learned how to double down. Wow. They, they even comp my room because I'm down $5,800. $5,800? Fifty-eight hundred chips. Fifty-eight hundred dollars. Fifty-eight hundred dollar chips. Keep your unused minutes for when you really need them with rollover only from AT and T. Now buy this Nokia and get one free. Orbit's traveler update. I just got a tip from other travelers. There's a long security line down at the airport. Oh. We're a community. And one day, I'll return the favor. Oh, that's nice. One back. I think what you're doing is wonderful. Orbis TLC gives you updates from a community of travelers to keep you a step ahead. <laughs> no, we only give loans to big business. Good afternoon. My business plan is fantastic. Yeah, what's that? And as you can oh, see, our small business owners. Uh. Research indicates this trend mm. will continue well into <laughs> next year. Now, if you turn your attention uh. to my 10-year forecast, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does your bank think small about your small business? Call Capital One instead Ooh. for no-hassle business loans, lines of credit, and credit cards. Check your mailbox. Hello, Capital One. What's in your wallet? <laughs> ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood, and in part by AT&T, your world delivered. Rutgers is the State University of New Jersey. It sits in Piscataway, not too far from Newark. It's about an hour drive to Manhattan. Eighth oldest university in the nation, more than 50,000 in enrollment. The great Paul Robeson, James Gandolfini, Tony Soprano, big supporter. He's here somewhere tonight, but he keeps it a secret, and we're not going to press him on the issue. And, of course, NBA Commissioner David Stern. Wait a minute. But you didn't even put the most recognizable guy up there. It's Mr. Magoo. He's a Rutgers grad. He Rutgers is a grad. Rutgers grad. Mr. Magoo. He's more recognizable than <laughs> Gandolfini. For our generation growing up. I'm more of a Sopranos guy than a Mr. Magoo guy, to be honest with you. <laughs> Tim Brown thought about it, They're encouraged to leave it in the end zone, and Rutgers will start at the 20-yard line. There he is. And somewhere in the in the text of that the cartoon, it, was, it came out that he went to Rutgers. Hey, that's some deep research there, but you know, you do what you got to do. I wonder if he could see back then. Did he need his glasses and step off edges and fall into things? <laughs> he had early ESPN. <laughs> Ray Rice, 21 yards on Rutgers' initial drive. It wasn't in there on that third and goal play. Underwood in motion to the tight end side. Rice, not much running up the middle. That's what Rutgers wants to do. Good news for the Bulls fans. Selby has a back strain, not serious, and he's right back in there. Yeah, they need everybody they can on the inside. They've been concerned in South Florida about not having enough meat on the inside to stop this downhill running game. Well, they got a lot of meat in the, in the got, of number 76, Richard Kleber. He, he's the big anchor at, at 312 pounds. He's the guy that the center's got to do something with if they're going to run the ball. He is the run stopper. He stands centers up and clogs that middle and takes up two gaps. Second and eight. Teal looks deep. And now it's broken up. Batted down by Moffitt at the line of scrimmage. Moffitt just has a nose for the ball. He gets himself in the right place. He knows what he's doing, runs this defense, and again, being in the right place at the right time gets a hand up. When the quarterback starts to throw the ball, get your hands up on the defensive line. Dan McCartney is the D-line coach here, the former Iowa State head football coach. When he separates and that ball starts going up, defensive lineman up front, get your hands in the air. On third and eight, Mike Teal typically likes the crossing routes. Those have been most successful on this down a distance. He tried to get it inside to Brett, and it was jammed off by Tyler Roberts, the nickelback, and Mike Teal, a very slow start. He's just one for five, and Rutgers will have to punt. Well, I was watching the route, and all of a sudden the ball was out early. So that means, number one, they're getting pressure on the quarterback, and number two, Teal 
is maybe feeling a, a little, little anxious, hurried maybe. and pushing it a little anxious, a little anxious. Let's see if Ito decides to use the foot instead of the arm this time. We're, we're betting on it. <laughs> foot. Marcus Edwards chases this punt at inside the 40. It kind of takes a sand wedge bounce, and the Knights will cover it at the 43. 36 yards on the punt. 3 3 game. Good field position for USF. Before there was a United States, a college was founded in the heart of New Jersey. Before there were bowl games, the first college football game was played at Rutgers. Before there were cures for tuberculosis, Rutgers scientists discovered the breakthrough antibiotic. Before the Supreme Court's landmark ruling, a Rutgers alumna helped make the case for desegregation. Before the world changes again, Rutgers will be working on it. Rutgers, Jersey Roots, Global Reach. This game being broadcast on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro TV, and our aerial coverage provided by the Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey Blimp. 75 years of making healthcare work for its 3.3 million members. Beautiful night, balmy night here in late October in New Jersey. Second possession for the Bulls. Once again, Ben Williams is the setback. They take it to him. First run of the night for Brophy and a nice crease. Brophy inside the 45 before Courtney Green and Lee combined on the stop 14 yards. Greasy, slippery, whatever you want to call it. Matt Brophy is a runner that has good vision and patience, but you're going to see the breakup here in the middle of this field. I mean, it, it, this is a major. That's a breakdown in, in the assignment. And we heard Coach Siano talking about staying on the upfield shoulder to protect against those boots to the right side or the reeds to the right. Williams has a crease. Ben Williams into the secondary, spinning inside the 35. So two big running plays, 15 yards there, and the Bulls are threatening. And again, you're, you're going to see some breakdowns here. A lot of moving up front, and you're running right by at the defensive line in here. You've got to break down. and can't get beyond the ball carrier in the handoff. Shemmy Lewis, the backup defensive end fool there. Five receivers. Williams, the tailback, in the slot. Brophy looks left. Flushed out. Now fires a low pass. Jesse Hester, Jr., and this is Dad, the famous Florida State receiver. Did he catch it? They're going to talk about it. They're giving it to him at the 18-yard line. You know, it's near you a talk, first down. Talk about finding a way to get it done. An unblocked rusher in his face. <laughs> he steps off, off balance. Looks like he's thrown it with his wrong hand the way he threw the ball. And he kind of pushes it out there, but gets the completion near the first down marker. Looks like they'll take a look at it in the replay booth. It will be a first down if the catch stands at the 18. Two quarterbacks starting very differently. Grothy, sharp, Teal struggling a bit. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you used the right word, Chris, anxious a little bit on Mike Till's part. And I think they felt like maybe at Rutgers they could make some big plays. It looks like this is a catch here. Yeah, I think so, too. After our record with replays, <laughs> I'm going to abstain on these for a little well, you're while. Our batting very good at I don't know that it's batting average, but we have had some <laughs> funky calls. Right? Yes, we, have. We, we had a chance last night at dinner. Uh, this officiating crew was next to us, and they were like, boy, you guys had a case study last <laughs> week. Review, the State video Lake confirms Forest. the call on the field. The ball was caught by the receiver. It results in a first down. Well, we thank them for being expeditious, unlike the <laughs> ACC crew. <laughs> and that's what they said they wanted to do. Make a decision. Replay booth. Make sure you get the word down, and let's get after and make the decision. Well, make the right the decision, though. Right. Just make the right decision fast. Well, last week we had an eight to ten minute delay. They like it in the sun dome as the Bulls are threatening now with a first down. Brophy to Williams. He is tracked down. Very short gain. Good pursuit by Jamal Westerman. 
played some high school football in Florida before heading up to Brompton, Ontario. You know, backing up to that last pay, play, Silvestro came through clean, and Grothy just slid to the side, avoided him, and found a way to get the ball off. It's Torres Johnson, the starting receiver down on the field, seems to be okay. About oh, five races to go. The chase is heating up. Jimmy Johnson, Clint Boyer, Tony Stewart fighting to stay alive. Don't miss the short track. Rubbing and racing his finest. The next Hill Cup to the historic Martinsville on ABC Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. But the point I'm trying to make about that is he's not the exceptional athlete that's going to beat you with his speed, his strength. It's more his quickness and savvy that he makes plays. Dorothy looks at the sideline. You'll see this a lot. Plenty of time on the play clock. And you see trips left. That's often a running formation for the Bulls. This time, Grothy wants to pass. Pressure. He'll take off. Grothy showing the quickness. Mike Grothy diving for the end zone. Didn't appear to be that speedy, but it's deceptive, and he got some good downfield blocks. And you're absolutely right. That is a run formation for them. And, man, I think he pulled out the Doug Flutie move here in the back. This is the fish hook I was talking about before. <laughs> you start one way and reverse your field and make the little hook move. And then he decides, you know what, I got a chance to get in, lowers the shoulder and gets in. He's just thinking, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like watching Pat White fly down the field. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's a different kind of – it's it's some quickness, a little bit of speed, and a little bit of – Great. So two possessions, 10 points for the Bulls, and their fans loving it in the Sun Dome. Well, this is a funnel theory tonight on defense, and you had the run formation right, Chris. And so right now, Greg Schiano is scratching his head and fired up because he lost contain. Do not allow Matt Grothy to get outside of you, and that's exactly what happened from a young freshman, 26, LaFage, on the outside. 26 lost contained. He's not the starting is safety, guys. Ron Gerald, they counted him for leadership. Still can't go a high ankle sprain. And LaFage filling in the best he can, but there's a major drop off. Yeah, they blitzed the quarterback, brought six guys. You're coming off the edge. Stay upfield shoulder. What is it? One plus, we said, uh, with Chiano was talking about his outside contain rusher. Stay at least a yard above the quarterback and don't lose contain. This is a defense for Rutgers that's used to shutting people down. They allow less than 300 yards a game. And USF has had good success mixing it up in the first couple possessions. Greg Gregory is the offensive coordinator. Mike Canales, you see, he's he's the passing game coordinator. Comes from a BYU background and been various places. The Jets, he was at University of Arizona. So he split duties. But Gregory runs the show. Dennis Campbell for Rutgers. He's popped at the 27. So Rutgers back to work now in a seven point hole late first quarter. We'll see if Teal can settle down, Doug. Yeah, he's he's got to take his time. You know, we're talking with the coaches for Rutgers. They're talking about their offense. They can't do standard routes on these corners. These corners are exceptional corners and will jump a regular out route, hook route, whatever. You have to do some double moves or some crossers where you pick people. But just the standard drop back and throw routes are not going to beat these corners. First down throw. Teal over the middle. Batted away. There's that good corner play. Mike Jenkins so quick. In fact, the comparison made by Wally Burnham to Deion Sanders. That's pretty high praise. And he particularly talked about Jenkins' ability to close the gap, you know, to run people down. They really praised him. Last year, Jenkins chased down Pat White, caught him at the three, had a turnover, really turned around for them. So South Florida, they've got the corners, they've got the speed. And Mel Kuyper says that Jenkins was a junior this year. If he came out, might be a mid-first rounder. Second and ten, it's Rice. Rice hammers ahead up near the 35. And it'll set up a third and three. Carlton Williams is the coach on the field for this defense. There to stop him. 
Well, Jim Levert hired, played a scrimmage back in 96, their first football game in September of 97. They beat Kentucky Wesley, and the stakes have risen sharply since then, joining the Big East three years ago. We talked about it, some, some pretty good wins along the way. Won a bowl game last year over East Carolina, but the wins at Auburn at home against West Virginia up the ante. And now they're playing with the, the big boys from the Blue Tees. Teal, this is a completion. A first down. And across the 40-yard line is Kevin Brock, the senior tight end. Glad to have him back in the lineup. Brock missing the first few games with an injury, but three catches last week against Syracuse. They need that tight end component in this offense. And they need it right now to get Teal's confidence. It was a nice little job of hooking up between the linebackers. Moffitt was all over him, and Teal turned that ball loose and stuck it on his chest. That was a big conversion for them throwing the ball. Work inside on those linebackers rather than the, the top-notch corners out there. First time they've converted a third down, just the second completion for Teal, and goes back to Rice. Good penetration by Williams, the safety on the stop. Well, Saturday, the battle in the Big Ten as the number one team, Ohio State, welcomes Michigan State to the horseshoe. That's regional action. Some of you will see Cal UCLA, Miami, Florida State, very different field of that rivalry, or Texas Tech and Missouri, a real shootout in the Big 12, 3.30 Eastern time, regional coverage on ABC. Tell us a little bit about Miami and Florida State when that's not the headliner. Far from it on this Saturday. Neither is USC Notre Dame. Different kind of year. Rice up the middle, barrels for a first down, down near the 40 of the Bulls. Dragging two tacklers for 14. That's a Ray Rice run. And if you don't have safety support backside here, these fellas have got to come up and play defense, and they got to get in the running lanes. They're not good, strong defenders from the safety positions. Well, actually, they started in a one-back set, but then the fullback goes in motion and gets to the backfield. It becomes a two-back run downhill, and the safety doesn't get up in there quick enough because of the motion. And John Bellinger, he's number 32, hadn't had a single carry all season. He's just a blocking fullback. Good job there. Rice this time hit in the backfield and spun for a loss by Moffitt. It's going to be a good duel all night. Rice and that guy Moffitt. Some folks have asked if maybe Greg Schiano gives too many carries to Ray Rice. And we asked him about it yesterday. And he said, hey, look, Ray Rice trains like a professional athlete, takes care of his body. Year round, he takes care of his body. And he gets stronger as the game goes. And he proved that a week ago. And he's over his history. His second halves have always been stronger than his first half. And he feels everybody else gets tired. It takes a special back though. I mean, he carried it 36 times Saturday, right back on a Thursday night. Already with 11 carries. Teal wants to go downfield. Looking long for Tim Brown. Intercepted, now drops. Trey Williams had his hand on it as he made the dive. Good coverage on Tim Brown. There was nothing there for Teal. I think, again, that's just pushing the ball somewhere it shouldn't be thrown. And when you start messing around with 21 and number four over there, Jenkins and and, and, and the, the defense is just good. Williams is one of those guys up inside putting pressure out there. Well, it, this was an all-out blitz. Cover zero, no safety in the middle. If the ball is thrown across the field, he has a chance. But the problem was Teal had to put the ball up early and kind of guessed and laid it out over That's the top. That's Trey Williams. And when you're doing that against Trey Williams, he's going to make most of those picks. He was very close to having control of that ball before he hit the ground. You can see landed on the football. He'll have to take a breather here. And Teal fires over the middle complete. It's under one for a first down inside the 30. He beat Carlton Williams for 14. So far, Teal's completions have been to a tight end against a linebacker, a receiver up the slot, again, an inside slot receiver. You know, Underwood here takes it up inside, and he's working in a zone, sits in the hole, and bang. They're not getting the completions on the outside versus the corners. They're getting it versus the linebackers and safeties. Good timing on that delivery, though, Doug. Threw it just at the top of the break. Squeeze it in there. So maybe he's gaining in confidence. This is Rice. Turns the corner. Rice lowers the shoulder pads and gets about eight as he ran over the corner, Ryan Gilliam. Ray said that <laughs> the biggest development that he's had is patience. Inside, 
guard tackle coming around the outside and then the burst. We've seen two or three times now Ray Rice coming around the corner with some speed and not just speed but some woodshed. <laughs> he brings it at the end of the run and delivers the ball. Coming at you. Rice with 52 yards in the first quarter. There's Michael Strahan of the New York Giants in the house tonight here in Jersey. We'll visit with him as we come back after a quarter. The second ranked Bulls up by a touchdown in Jersey. World Championships begin October 26th on ESPN2. Treadmill on. Blinds close. Store open. Not everything responds to your voice like sync. Introducing sync. Play artists, the strokes. Voice activate your MP3 player, Bluetooth phone. Call home. Hello. And more. Sync. Powered by Microsoft. Exclusively on new Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. I think it's time I told my little bro my rules to live by. Rules. Chop. Always, always get chili on your nachos, Bel Grande. A Taco Bell classic, now topped with chili. New chili cheese nachos, Bel Grande. Only at Taco Bell. What are you working for? Is it the passion? The future? The challenge. Or maybe it's for something else. Whatever you work for, Monster works for you. With powerful tools that deliver the best job match. Go to Monster today and find the job that works for you. Monster works for me. Sam Adams, Boston Lager. It was love at first taste. I fell in love with the white ale. Sam Light is my drink. Cream Stout, my personal favorite. I'm very fond of the double bock. The winter lager is the best thing on this planet. Forgive me. A decade has passed in silence, for I couldn't shame your melody with my Parkinson's. But soon, my brain will send tiny electronic notes to my fingers and bend them to my will as before. Let the neighbors bang on the walls. I will play Fortissimo all night long. Find the confidence to face any condition at Cleveland Clinic. Honey, I need you to take the trash out. Oh, and later, we need to give the dog a bath. And after that, we can go to Home Depot. Let's just go now. Right now at the Home Depot, get basic carpet installation by licensed professionals for just $159 for one room. Or get carpet installation for every room in your house for just $199, no matter how many rooms you have. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. With five races remaining to crown a Nextel Cup champion, it's all on the line this Sunday at Martinsville. All clear, all clear, go for it. Clint Boyer and Tony Stewart fight to keep their chase hopes alive, while teammates Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson get ready for a short track rematch. All right, Gordon, look ahead, side. Go, 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 go. Every lap matters. The chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup continues with the Subway 500 at Martinsville, Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. Start of the second quarter here, two possessions, 10 points for USF, but Rutgers, she went on the clock, had it for almost 10 minutes of that first quarter, running almost double the number of plays as USF. This is play number 10 on this drive, a second and two from the Bulls 20. Rice hammers ahead, again, heavy contact, and Rice shoves the pile as flags fly all over the place. He's down to the five-yard line. Well, that's encouraging for Rutgers right there. Is that not what they wanted to do? Dad, talk about a downhill run. We got three flags at least on the field. I didn't throw mine on it. I, I couldn't reach. Personal foul. Face mask, number 15. Apparently they have the distance to the goal line. First down. I've always been a big believer that when the running back carries the ball with passion, that it invigorates an offensive line. That offensive line up front, and you watch these legs. We saw his legs in his shorts yesterday. He pulled them up, wow. and he showed us he's got some power. That's why a safety didn't want to come up and meet him in the hole. That's a serious face mask penalty, by the way, too. Mike Jenkins dragged it for about five yards. He, he wasn't going to go down, and Jenkins knew it, and his last-ditch effort was hold on to this face mask and hope. 
Well, you know, that's going to get spotted, and it was by every official on the field. Well, it was either that or he's going to wind up in the end zone. First and goal. The muscles to the left of the formation. And that's where Rice is running. But it's tough to go wide on this defense. That's a loss of a yard. Moffitt on the stop again. Successful defensive play there. Push him east and west. They got a much better shot of bringing him down, Ray Rice down, and up the middle. Remember, this was the problem earlier. Rutgers had a first and goal at the two, had to settle for a field goal. They're very good in the red zone. It's a very good percentage. But in their goal to go situations, they don't score touchdowns a very high percentage of the time. Well, this is back in the first quarter, what you're talking about here. They get down to the goal line and just couldn't quite punch it in. It's Teal. It's a fake direct snap, and the Bulls aren't fooled. Rice took the direct snap as Teal faked that it had gone over his head. And get back down to the two, and it'll set up another third and goal. Well, still, that's a good positive play in the in the red zone to, to be moving the pile forward, moving forward. Another one of those in the end. What do you think, though? They keep trying the They're, trickery down yeah. close. I, I agree. I agree. Go to your patented stuff. Pound the ball. Run that power off tackle, and it's been stuffed a couple times. So you go to the power pass where the fullback no, do they goes not out in the trust so they can move Cleaver out of there and, and have success with their butter? There's only one Cleaver over there. That's 300 pounds. The rest of those guys are in that 260 range. You got a big 300 pound offensive line with Ray Rice running it. You get down the hill. You know, they'll talk about it. The play clock running down, and Rutgers will take a timeout on this crucial third down. So we'll check in with Reese Davis, 38-30 uh, update in the studio. Reese. All right, Chris, after a glorious 12-year run that included four world championships, Joe Torre Dunn is manager of the Yankees. He rejected a one-year offer worth a reported $5 million, bucks, which would be a $2.5 million pay cut, and decides that he will not manage the Yankees next year. Also in baseball, just underway, Game 5 of the American League Championship Series. Cleveland trying to close out Boston. Kevin Euclid has gone yard in that game. Manny was tagged out at the plate without sliding. You know, here are all the games on ESPN Radio. John Miller, Joe Morgan there. Sports Center after the game. Stay current ESPN News. Uh, gets a grimace from Flutie, the Manny Ramirez thing. Hey, big connection between Tampa for the powwow was going on regarding Tory's future and the New York area tonight with the Bulls here and, and Steinbrenner and company down there. Joe Torrey saying no, about, thank you. How about Torrey, though? You yeah. know, how many people reject a $5 million salary? You know, it's... <laughs> he doesn't need the money. No, but he likes the respect. Knights trying to get in the end zone, tie this game on third down. It's Rice the long setback. Teal will throw. Touchdown! Rifling it to Tycon Underwood. Tampa. The frenzy now is in Piscataway as Underwood collects his fifth touchdown of the season. The nice leading receiver. They go away from the bread and butter that entire goal to go series, but it works as Teal delivers the, the bullet. Ito, perfect this season on PATs. It's 29 for 29. 10 10. Underwood does a great job on this route of sitting down in the window. Brock, the tight end, goes up and through and runs to the corner and clears out the zone coverage. Underwood comes underneath, hooks up, and bang. Great timing by Teal. Well, it's all a result of the play action and the running game of Ray Rice getting it in there. And you've got linebackers. There's that cushion between the corners and the safeties. There's so much focus on Ray Rice. Underwood being very disciplined about sitting in a hole and making sure that Teal could find him. So that the Giants star, Michael Strahan, uh, coming from Jersey to join us now on the sidelines. Michael, I, Texas Southern was your school. I guess they didn't quite play college football at this level, so you get the chance to watch a real significant game tonight. Hey, 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 we played some significant <laughs> games, man. We played Jackson State and Grambling. Those are big games. That's what we, we were their homecoming feast. So, um, yeah, this is great to be at Rutgers. My nephew, Brett, plays baseball here, and they're getting their rings for winning the biggest championship at halftime. So, decided to come down. I'll get a chance to watch a great football game and check my nephew out as well. Nice to get the pop for the Rutgers baseball team in there. Now, when, did, did your eye naturally go to the defensive line? These are two pretty stout defenses coming into the game. What have you seen so far down there? Um, you know what I've seen, and you brought it up earlier. I, I think when I watch this, when it comes to defensive alignment, how many plays are actually out there? And Rutgers has won, um, ran twice as many plays 
at South Florida. So it's going to be interesting to see if the line can hold up later in the game, especially with Ray Rice running the way that he runs. And the defensive guys keep a close eye on that, that play count. Here's the kick. It's taken short by Ryan Gilliam. And good coverage by the Knights who drop him at the 17. Smart on the tackle. Hey, Mike, how about South Florida? You very aware of where they're from and on anything about them? <laughs> yeah, you know, our, our, so Vika Mitchell, our linebacker, went there, and he's been bragging about them in the locker room all the time. So trust me, I know where they're from. And I think it's surprising to everybody, including me, that they're number two in the country. But they have, a, you know, they have a fight on their hands. I think now they're, they're the hunted. You know, they're not the hunters now. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can hold on to that ranking and how far they'll go with it. You know, Mike, what do you think that the main difference is just as a defensive and a pass rusher from the college to the NFL level? We're seeing George Selvey. He's the number one sacker in college mm -hmm. football for the Bulls with 11 and a half. What's the big difference from this level to the next level? Well, when you get to the next level, everybody you play against is big, strong, and fast. And everybody has, you know, is working on a technique. It's a full-time job. You're not in school during the day and working on your football in the afternoon. You're working on football all the time. So you'll find out that the competition every week is, is really, really intense and really tough. Bulls get the ball back, and Mike Ford, the freshman tailback, makes his first appearance and pops a gain over the middle. In the last couple of years, Michael, we've seen the profile of Rutgers football rise in Jersey and across the river in New York. Is there enough room in the football landscape for you to share things with the Jets and now with the Scarlet Knights? Oh, without a doubt. You know what? One great thing about New York City is you can support a lot of football teams, baseball, basketball, and college. And um, the fans here are phenomenal. And Rutgers is doing well now. Cociano's done a great job with the program. And, you know, they're only going to get better. So they definitely have enough fans and enough people out here to support this. Full house tonight on second and five. It's complete. Caught over the middle by Marcus Edwards, who's up near midfield. And the Bulls continue to keep Giano's defense off balance, 26 yards. And Edwards is a receiver. There are a bunch of really good. They feel like they got six to eight different receivers. No one go-to guy stays the course on the outside so that he doesn't drift back inside to the safety and linebacker drop. Nice little touch on that pass, too. Up over the linebackers, dropping it in a window. Nice little feel on that pass pattern. Good rhythm and timing on the end of And there's nothing, there's nothing more frustrating on defense when you're playing against a team that you know is really good and um, they pick up a play like that. Kind of demoralizes you. So on the Rutgers end, they may have run more plays, but it's going to be interesting to see how those guys, their attitude-wise, they can hold up if South Florida continues to make these type of plays. So, you know, when you come to a game like this, you see the college kids, you wonder how are they going to hold up mentally. And, you know, Rutgers has a test in that way tonight. Physically, they can do it. The mental aspect, I think, is going to be the challenge. What about those scrambling quarterbacks like Grothy on that I touchdown? I hate them, like Doug Flutie. You gotta love that. I have some black marks on my elbow from the AstroTurf from chasing <laughs> Doug Flutie and falling and missing. So, you don't, you, we hate, we hate, and that's a strong word, but it's true, rushing quarterbacks. No fun at all. I want some stiff that stands in one place and we can just run them over. But you know what, Mike, when you're going against a running quarterback like that, do you sometimes use your eyes so much out there that you kind of lose a little bit of the aggression? Sometimes you focus more on where he's at than actually defeating the blocker. And if, when that's the case, you're basically not going to get any pressure on the quarterback. And we saw earlier with the run that he had around the corner. With a quarterback like this, you have to contain him. And it's tough because, obviously, he's going to be faster than defensive linemen for the most part. And Rutgers, they did a great job, pretty good job outside of the one play that resulted in the touchdown. Short game by Mike Ford. Good job, by the way, so far with the Giants. you got the 49ers you. this weekend. You've got a book coming out which deals with a whole lot of topics, Michael. Mm -hmm. Some of them controversial. What, what do you hope to uh, communicate to people who read the book? Well, the book is written really for fans and for family and friends so they can stop asking me what it's like to play professional football. Read the book. It talks about everything. What happens in the locker room, under the pile, um, contract negotiations, and a big sack by Rutgers. That's what we needed. Well, now it's we. That was Jamal Westerman combining with the safety of the and And we is... Michael says a first sack of the night. <laughs> that wee stuff came from the outside from a young man who lost LaFedge, lost contain on the touchdown run by Matt Grothy. See him at the top, Doug. He comes on the outside shoulder. Watch him hit him with his left shoulder. He stayed on the top side of the quarterback so he couldn't sprint out of there. Hey, Michael, thanks very much. We appreciate it. Best of luck this Sunday. Best of luck with the book. Great job. All right, thank you, gentlemen.
Third and 17. Rothy, perfect so far tonight. Fires downfield, a catch, but short of the first down. Tough catch in traffic by Dontavia Bogan, the freshman for 15 yards. Let's go to EA. Well, guys, while you were having that great talk there with Michael Strahan, over here on Rutgers' sidelines, Greg Schiano was very fired up with Joe LaFesh. He actually dropped his headset, got in the guy's face, and said, will you start thinking with your head? Of course, you saw what happened when he went back out there on the field to Matt Grothy, guys. That was a clutch completion, but it's still fourth and two. And they're not going to take a gamble. Levitt wants to punt it with Alvarado. Rutgers, pretty good pressure. Alvarado just boots this one right into the end zone. No real good effort at a pooch kick. If you're going to do that, you might as well go for it, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Rutgers gets the football back. 10-10 in Piscataway. Day, workers across America cover our good name with dirt, grease, and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. Awesome home theater, Coach. Hey, you bet it is, John. And you know, Circuit City's the only place a real football fan will get high depth. Then why aren't we your place? Wife's afraid we'll ruin the new carpet. Right now, get no interest for 18 months on TVs for $90.99 and up with a Circuit City credit card. Plus, save an extra $300 instantly on any HD TV, $9.99 and up when you sign up for Direct TV service. That's a rip shot. A winner each day at 40winners.com. Presented by Southwest Airlines, Michigan versus Illinois. Saturday at 8 Eastern, college football lives here. Raking, blowing, and hauling away grass and leaves is exhausting work that can rob you of your weekends. But with the DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum, you can complete this tiresome chore quickly and easily. Attach it to your lawn tractor's mower deck, and the DR's high-powered vacuum collects leaves, grass clippings, nuts, and twigs from your lawn while you ride. All material is finely shredded to one-tenth its original volume with DR's patented shark teeth blades. For smaller properties, check out DR's powerful walk-behind models. No matter what size lawn, let the DR Leaf and Lawn Vac help you create a property you can be proud to own. Call 1-800-385-1424 for your free DR catalog and DVD. You'll learn how you can try a DR for six months risk-free. Seasonal savings are now in effect, so call 1-800-385-1424 or visit drleafvac.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. Scarlet Knights of the Bulls, 10-10 in New Jersey. Scataway in College Town, Scarlet Knights City. Nice little town, not too far from Newark, New Jersey. Supposed to ask what exit when you talk about New Jersey as we see Taurus Johnson leading receiver for the Bulls, a, a right foot or ankle problem. Rice picks his way, short game. They use a lot of different receivers, so the loss of any one for the Bulls perhaps not crucial, but Johnson did come into the game with 22 catches, tops on the team. They talk about just calling the route, letting the quarterback read it out and throws to whoever happens to be on the field at that time. So it shouldn't be a big deal to what they do. Rice already got with 16 carries. Just five days removed from a 36 carry game on the artificial turf up at Syracuse. No problem. Wants more. You say so. <laughs> Rice hammers ahead. 
Not much there. It'll set up a third and medium. Now this was a, a crucial game again off back to back losses. They fell down 14 nothing to Syracuse and then number 27 got busy a block punt change momentum. Look at him. He, he was moving quick. He said he put the team on his shoulders and he said let's go. Now that Mr. Magoo music I'm not sure that, that <laughs> necessarily <laughs> matches his running style. Shiana said he ran harder last week especially in that second half than he's ever seen him run. But 47 after halftime. Three total touchdowns. You lose up at Syracuse and your season comes apart in a hurry. Yeah. That was a crucial rally from 14 zip down. They dominated and rang up more than 500 yards offense. Third and five. A low throw incomplete. Underwood was wide open. Teal couldn't quite get it there. But again, Underwood is wide open. He's in the slot now, running a corner route, but it doesn't matter. He's sitting in that window. This ball. He's got to step short up and throw it though. It bounces. Did he get his hands on it? No, no. Uh, it's not a I got some green. But I get the feeling, Doug, that when I'm watching Mike Till in the, in the pocket right now, compared to the other games, he's not confident. He's not stepping to his throws. He's thinking more about that defensive line who plays in the back. It's got to be in the back of his mind is the speed of this defensive line, this entire defense, and getting rid of the ball and avoiding sacks. He's been sacked once tonight. Ito takes a step and boots a line drive punt. <laughs> Marcus Edwards, a strange fair catch. He traveled 37 yards, and Bulls will once again have pretty good field position. doing making a call to who all state uh, you want to think about that oh yeah oh yeah idiot over 800 million people around the world go to bed hungry join the movement to stop world hunger by supporting the world food program to learn more visit our restaurants during world hunger relief week or go to from hunger to hope.com Part of being a great player is having great vision. So when it came time for me to get a new TV, I got a Vizio. It's clear, it's crisp, it gives me all the details I'm used to seeing on the field. My Vizio makes me feel like I'm right in the game. You thought I'm napping. Better. Get in the game with the new Vizio, America's number one flat panel HD TV company. Side. Please drink responsibly. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. <laughs> Midway second quarter beginning to rain here. Let's go to EA for a quick weather report. Aaron, how bad is it? <laughs> it's not time for the Gore-Tex yet, but it's a light, light sprinkle. These USF Bulls are used to it, though, Chris. I'll keep you updated on the rain today. Appreciate it. Ben Williams back in the game as the setback. The junior who's carried the bulk of the running load tonight. Grothy, perfect passing. Run it three times for 24. No turnovers, only one penalty tonight. Pretty clean start. That's both teams combined. Grothy keeps it and has a crease. Grothy, center sets into the secondary. Rags a man to the 43. Grothy the ball carrier. Jason McCourty, one of the McCourty twins on the stop, but a 14-yard gain. Well, you saw the stat, the passing yards, the rushing yards. He's the leading rusher on this team. He makes a place for the air. He's reading it. Fakes a handoff. Actually, this isn't even a read. This is a run all the way, it appears to me. Yeah, but you know what? When you we listened to practice yesterday, and Devin McCourty 
The corner's got to get down in that. They do not want to play outside the phone booth in this game against Grothy. Talk to Matt Grothy's dad, also named Matt. He says he's so nervous during games, he almost loses his lunch. Matt, nothing bothers him. Gets the snap off just before the play clock expires, and there's his first incompletion of the night. Tried to get it to Ben Williams. Grothy, a guy that has been called no disrespect, but a, a poor man's Tim Tebow, not quite the size of the Gators quarterback, certainly not the hype recruit that Tebow was at a high school. Well, we've seen his running style here tonight, how slippery he is. If you don't get on him immediately, Grothy will get you. And there's his dad. You think he's ready to lose uh, his lunch that he had? Wait, right? When he pulls those buttons. <laughs> The problem is sitting in the stands, you have no control over anything, so you're a nervous wreck. He's been in high school coaching. He knows the game well. Both he fires over the middle, incomplete. Trying to get it to Amari Jackson for his first catch of the night, but Jason McCourty was defending. You know, and the dad, when you're in the stands, you have to depend on receivers to take care of your son, and so there's a drop ball. Catch the ball. Catch ball. the ball, son. Jackson had his hands on the ball. Could have made the play. Mom Brenda there. They had two other sons, younger sons. Matt's the older. The three boys. Third and ten. They're 0 for 2 tonight. Rutgers shows pressure and brings it up the middle. Brophy lost it to the outside. Incomplete. He was looking for Dontavia Bogan, the freshman. LaFedge, the young safety on the coverage. Bogan. Yeah, bringing pressure there, guys. Bogan didn't exactly. He, Grothy had to rush to throw and throw it a little bit early and anticipate. And Bogan didn't come out at the angle that Grothy thought he would come out at. He came out nice and flat. and, and uh, Or Grothy the angle that Levitt wanted him either. No, <laughs> somebody didn't take the right angle. Punt. High kick. This time he does a better job of not booting it in the end zone. It's fumbled. Picked up by the Bulls. And now they'll blow it. A whistle. Eric Setzer. He's the long snapper who was down there. He's got possession. This is a muffed punt. Yep. Therefore, a muffed. it cannot be advanced. Where if he had caught this ball, got hit and fumbled, it can be advanced. But this is a muff, and the ball ends up in the return team's arms. He just said it had been a very cleanly played game up until that point. The ruling on the play is that the ball touched the receiver and then bounced into the possession of the kicker. I rule the ball's automatically dead. First down. Did not hit the ground. And again, that's the man that snapped it. Eric Setzer all the way down. The fumble by Brown. Right into the big fella's hands. He can't advance it, but. Good how's the running style here. How's that, how, how's that form? But you know what I like is the referee John McDade. He gives the explanation for it. They keep the play resume, uh, going on the field and they don't take time away from the game. So the first mistake of the night by the Scarlet Knights sets up the Bulls at the 18. Brophy's got it. Flag down as Brophy's tackled after about a seven yard gain. Rankard on the stop. Flag was in the holding zone. Number 65, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Now they got Ryan Schmidt, the left guard. There's a major breakdown on the left side or the right side of the defense at Rutgers right now. And you're going to see on the outside, there's nobody. There's when, when, when you see this play develop, Matt Grothy is supposed to be contained and pinned. Linebacker has got to slide out. Somebody has got to make sure that Grothy is funneled back to somebody in the middle of the field. It, they talked and preached about it all day in practice yesterday. First and 20 after the holding penalty. Grothy looks, fires on the swing. It's caught by Jesse Hester Jr. into the end zone. Just like his dad used to do. 28 yards. And the Grothies love that. And so do the folks in the Sun Dome. You talked about this being a clean football game. When Rutgers has had problems, it's been because of turnovers and lack of execution. We've seen their defense melt down against Maryland. They're calling unsportsmanlike on Esther after the touchdown. They had an unblocked rusher coming off the edge right at Grothley. He stood there, both feet under him, calm, cool, collected, and delivered a strike to Hester. It was just a great execution by the offense. 
Levitt getting the explanation about the unsportsmanlike on the touchdown. You saw Mike Canales, the passing game coordinator, showing his displeasure with Hester. It has to like to be Hugh Campbell, the line judge, having to listen to all the coaches, you know, and all that, and be diplomatic, you know, a little political over there. Nice, you know, Linda here. No, thank you. You asked me, do I want that job? <laughs> no way. <laughs> now Alvarado makes it a seven-point lead once again for USF. So Grothy still sharp. And they convert on the muff punt. Here's the touchdown, and. There's what drew the flag from the Big East official. That's a little bit uh, strict, isn't it? Let him have fun. Yep. Seventeen ten. The Bulls convert the muff punt by the Scarlet Knights. Rookie's first touchdown pass of the night. We salute the Big East officials who, during the entire month of October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Lending visibility to the cause by using pink whistles. We don't think the whistle should have been used in the touchdown play for a 15 yard penalty on, on Hester, but I guess the shh to the crowd till they got him for. I don't know. Yeah, the quieting of the crowd, a little taunting towards the crowd. I, very little. And I am the first to throw a flag on that type of stuff. I am. I, I don't think this You're is old called. school. Huh? I'm very old school. Watch the official, though. He'll stare at Watch him down. stare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Got, uh -huh. you I want got some a, of this? I got a pink whistle and I got a yellow flag, <laughs> and you're not going to win this. One. Do you want some of this? <laughs> <laughs> the yellow flag is what's important about that play, and it'll be a kickoff back at the 15 yard line. But it was great execution on the touchdown pass by Grothy. The, the, the rush was on. Rencar came up, number 47 off the edge, unblocked, coming down on him hard. He stood there, calm, cool, collected, delivered a strike. Very good start. This is a a team, when you look at the offensive numbers, it's pretty pedestrian, frankly. It's a team built around defense. Growth these skills obviously carry this offense, but none of the numbers really pop out at you. Which but they again. like. They like that. Yeah. No, no problem with it. Teaching to kick off from the 15. And coming up the field, it is James Townsend. Townsend still alive across the 40, so that flag results in good field position as the Knights can once again try to answer a touchdown by USF. Talking about average numbers offensively for USF, but defense wins championships. If they're going to be that. a champion, championship caliber, <laughs> yes, I've heard it too many times. <laughs> it's the offense selling the tickets and the defense actually winning the games for you. The fact that they've got an experienced defensive coaching staff, Jim Levitt having a, a, a great fire about him. I mean, it, it's a great story when you talk about the yellow submarine think tank of that defensive staff over there. We'll get into that. That's, that's where they come up with a defensive game plan every week. Defense on the field as Rutgers takes it first and ten. And one more time, Rice ran into his own blocker. Aaron, what about that that yellow submarine room? I don't know anything about the Beatles. That's your generation, guys. <laughs> well, when you talk oh. about the years of experience on USF's defense, how about this? 116 years of experience head by Wayne Burnham and, and the folks that come to Dan McCarney, Rich Ra Rachel, Tim Douglas. They talk about the yellow submarine that they go in. They said they're in there from hours. 12 noon to 12 midnight. It starts to smell like men in there, old feet. After a while, they start getting giddy. But I talked to Tim Douglas, who is the youngest coach for the defense for USF, and he says, hey, I'm the only one using the PowerPoint, the BlackBerry. These guys don't know anything, so I keep them young. Kind of like me with you guys. Okay, well, the defense knew what they were doing right there. It's the short completion. Nenovic, the tight end, stopped by Ben Moffat. Old feet, huh? Well, it smells yeah. like old feet. feet. That's well, not a very pretty picture in there, but they come up with some nice game plans. Yeah, Troy Douglas says that they go in there really on Sunday and they just lock the door and they start working and they stay in there around midnight. He starts playing those, those fight songs. And well, I'll tell you what, though, coaches, coaches put in so many hours. They sleep in their offices. They don't see their families. People got to realize how many hours these guys really put in. That's been paying off. In humble beginnings, USF up at number two, trying to get a stop on third and nine, and Teal has a completion over the middle. Big hit in the secondary, but Underwood holds on. Williams delivered the blow, but 16 yards. We talked about Teal's presence in the pocket. It's been lacking, not on this play. Man, this time, he really stands in there and delivers the ball and gets hit. Little second hitch there hanging onto it, stayed under control, delivered the ball, and Underwood took another takes another big hit and hangs on. 
Offensive line for Rutgers that led the nation. Fewest sacks allowed last year, only eight. Given up four so far this year, which is again among the national lead. And Knights will take a timeout here. It's their final timeout of the half. 520 to play. Well, Michigan had off the rough start in the season, the losses, but now the Wolverines are rolling as they head into Champaign, and the Illini have to regroup after the deflating loss at Iowa. 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC. Illinois pretty one dimensional on offense and it caught up to him against the Hawkeyes. Yeah, but if there's a weakness at Michigan, it's defending a, an offense that really moves you around, spreads you out. We saw Oregon, Dennis Dixon, what he did to them, and Juice Williams and company, they might be a little challenge for that Michigan defense. Yeah, but the bottom line for Michigan now is they are 3 0 in conference. They, they may be the team again, even after the 0 2 start, what looked real scary for them. To be the contender with Ohio State, or the, the, the one team that can challenge Ohio well, State. Well, they did a great job that Wolverines defense last week against Purdue. They just smothered the spread of Tiller. Got way ahead in that game. The final score was misleading. But Michigan dropped the hammer on him. Chad Henney's got to get it going too. I mean, we've seen Henney in the past have some games and throw. And he's got to replace Mike Hart. I, I thought he was pretty sharp in his first game back, though. This is Rice. A stiff arm to get the corner and get down near the 30. 11 yards shoved out by Allen and the workhorse continues 19 carries for Rice in the first half to earn his 81 yards equal yards outside as well as inside. Here's that patience that he was talking about being able to jump to the outside the stiff arm. Knocked Selby, 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 yeah. Selby. Selby gets closed down inside. Oh. They're forcing, <laughs> forcing Rutgers a power play that usually is designed to go off tackle. They're forcing it to bounce and go outside. That wasn't just a stiff arm. He shoved Selby to the ground with that. The old running back up here loves that. Oh, man. This Rice again. Carry number 20. Now he tried that stiff arm on the left side, and Bowie wasn't buying a loss. Let's try the stiff arm on me, big guy. No. Bowie did a great job of sliding laterally with this play, and again, this was a straight toss for the corner, and they couldn't get outside. They designed trying to get to the corner there. The last few have been really meant to allow the defense to make a mistake, and South Florida's defense has, for the most part tonight, they've kept their lanes. You guys have said that, you know, Rice is like a pro, indestructible, but I, I wonder if these carries are going to really pile up coming off that busy game on Saturday. Wonderful feel the effects in the second half more than the defense. Teal over the minute. Trying to thread it to Underwood incomplete. Roberts on the coverage. Underwood a catchable ball. It was low, but it was there. Back to your question about Ray Rice. Do you think it'll start to have a toll on him? When you get around the guy and you feel him, his his energy and his vibes that come off the guy. I mean, pregame he was down there. <laughs> Did you feel him or you oh, just, oh, his energy, his presence? His energy <laughs> oh, okay. and presence. Okay. Hey, man. <laughs> he uh, he was intense during pregame, and some of those South Florida players were trying to talk a little smack, and he was just staring them down. We, we saw him talking back a little bit just, just before we came off. Knights not very successful on third and long tonight. They need 11. Rice in as a blocker as Teal fires. Intercepted up in and out of the hands. Boy, Carlton Williams came up, read the route, jumped it, almost had a pick. Well, you keep working the inside of the field, and eventually these two safeties on the middle of the field are going to figure it out. There's nothing to clear the safety out, so Williams oh. reads it all the way and just drives on the ball. And even though this is a ball he should have intercepted and caught, that ball speeds up. When you're running directly back at the quarterback like that to try to intercept it, that's a tricky catch. But one that corners and se secondary guys work on. No, that's that, that's why they play in the secondary. You know, the drop pick, wide receivers it may pick. cost him three points as Ito is on from 48 yards. This would be his long so far this season. Career long is 53. And Joseph will spend a time out here. If they were talking about the potential for a fake, they just didn't have the right personnel on the field. Maybe both. Well, we've seen a fake punt earlier in the first quarter, so Greg Schiano is not allergic to <laughs> some kind of trickeration here. Talked about the relatively brief timeline for this USF program, just the 11th season, only the third in the Big East. Of course, 
Rutgers beat Princeton 6-4 in 1869, which credit is the first college game. You were there, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> How old do you think I am? 61, they had a perfect season. The Texas Bowl, first bowl win last season. They came very close to winning the conference crown and playing in the BCS. It was the loss in West Virginia that cost them that bowl bit. And the Big East, you don't have great bowl tie-ins. You need to get that corrected. If you lose, you can drop from the BCS to a, a really minor bowl. So again, Ito from 48. To cut the Bulls lead to four. Blocked. It's blocked. Scooped up. Fumbled ahead. And now another fumble. It's Trey Williams scooping up the ball. And Williams heading for the end zone. They're signaling a touchdown. They're throwing a flag here. On well, the intentionally fumbling the ball forward, especially the second one. Well, Seattle wanted a flag. They didn't throw the I flag. They threw the beanbags. They threw beanbags at the spot of where the ball was intentionally shoveled forward. That was clearly not an attempt to field the ball. They batted it forward. Storming in was Tyrone McKenzie to make the block. That's an intentional shovel. Mike forward. Jenkins initially That's he had another it. He threw it forward. <laughs> And then Williams scoops it up and takes it the last 20 yards. <laughs> These are it looked like they practiced that they knew what to do. These are judgment type decisions. I that's a he forward was hit pass. There. He was that, hit there. The, the second one, Shiano's following him all the way down the field on this. He's saying, now wait a minute, that was intentional. This is intentional. The second one, <laughs> there was control of the ball, and it's actually a forward pass. Which should be an illegal forward pass and an incompletion. Well, I don't know that they can so, even. But, but you don't do that just all of a sudden by chance in Piscataway, New Jersey, come up and talk start trying to do that. This. this is something where, as a block unit, you work on this advancing the ball there. You, you can you get away with say, that first you one. Could no, say, you can't get away with that. That second one, that's that's the shovel he forward. He did get hit from behind, though. You're oh, fact. Fowler. You're not it, going there. He, he, no, no, don't I, you think he intentionally. Of course he did, but, but you have to have an official see it that way clearly in the heat of the moment. Good point. The judgment of whether it's intentional or not. He was hit. He cannot was hit from be there. disputed. But I think if you review it, you can dispute the second one as an illegal forward pass because he had possession of the ball. This is where the replay booth has to really assist the officials on the field. It, it, but it depends on what you're allowed to, to actually review here. Well. Oh, they, they can rule that. That, that, uh, that would sorry. be hard to say that it's, it was intentional. He was, you hit, can get away with it. He was hit. The ball was shifting from the left hand to the right hand. And then and, he but threw it, was, it forward. But a little bit forward. Oh, Gee, my Your goodness. contention is that Mike Jenkins, number four, the first player, is escorting Williams into the end zone, that his initial, initial hit oh, was, was illegal. Yeah. That, 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 that to me, looked one. like a legitimate fumble. The second yeah. one was the one I thought live. Hey, how about, how about this? Last week, it Florida State at Wake Forest, we get a case study because the officiating crew tonight, they had to <laughs> review a crazy call that took eight to ten minutes. We, we talked with this crew last night and hoping we didn't have something come up, and this is great penetration. That, by the is, way, on that the is flagrant to me that Jenkins throws that up forward, and this is flagrant after the fact, but the ball was knocked out. Well, flagrant. So I don't, he, the ball was knocked loose. But then he slapped it, it forward with his right it, hand. It's going to be forward. returned, though, and it's going to come back because it's an illegal propelling of the football forward. You just can't but do it. But not on this one, on the, on the first attempt, you're yeah. saying. I, I, the replay both booth upstairs will come back on this thing. They're going to bring the ball back. You cannot advance the ball, illegal propelling of the football, <laughs> and the replay booth is going to come up with that. The illegal propelling of the football. Propelling. We were just told that by yes, the that's right. crew who came the in. Head of, the head the of the conference crew. You couldn't let it go and let Craig have the credit for it. Well, I mean, that's what's so good about it. You know, we've told these folks when we're up here in the in the in the booth and we're announcing a game, we're at the mercy of trying to figure out exactly what they're trying to call down there. You know, what are they looking at? How are they trying to review it? You know what's great about this though? They have ab obviously been coached that on a block kick, let's push that ball forward, get it ahead of the crowd, scoop and score. Don't just fall on the ball and get the. Yeah, that didn't just by happenstance. No. You don't just show up at Rutgers and get the no. idea that you're going to advance Absolutely. the ball. Well, whether or not the touchdown stands, even if the Bulls just get possession, it's an enormous play in this game. That was a blocked field goal that turned things around for Rutgers last week against Syracuse. And this, instead of 
cutting it to a four point Bulls lead. USF, even if the touchdown comes off the board, as Craig has told us it will. Yeah, they'll well. still have possession of seven. He's it's got inside here. information. Attaboy. If it's so clear cut, how come the review is still going on? Marking After of the ball review, is very tricky. Video overturns the call on the field. There's an illegal forward pass from the 39 yard line. The ball by rule is dead when it hits the ground. Five yard penalty for an illegal forward pass will be enforced on the recovering team, five yards from the 39 yard line. It'll be first down from there. With a game clock operator, please put 417 on the clock. So a touchdown off the board and one of the latest flags we've ever seen. There never was I a flag it. thrown on the play. <laughs> exactly. He threw it on the review. Thank I you. <laughs> I have yeah. never seen look the flag. Look at the look here. Jim Levin. Hey, you know, hey, you know I, what? I've never seen the flag come out during the review announcement. But you know what? That was great. Replay worked in this instance. Absolutely. They were able to help the officiating crew on the field in a pretty, pretty quick manner make the call that takes some points off the board. But who remembers the holy roller for the San Diego Chargers? Not me. Against the San Diego Chargers, I should say, by the Oakland Raiders. What, the holy roller you're talking the about? The holy roller. Yeah. Stabler, Casper sure. bobbles it into the end zone. That's basically what they did. But of course the block stands and now the Bulls try to build on the seven point lead before halftime set up at the Rutgers 44 after the five yard penalty. True freshman Jamar Taylor is the setback and a flag before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start. Number nine often. Five yard penalty, still first down. Got John Sophie joining us on a headset of the biggest officiating crew. Just a further explanation of the, the flag there, which actually was never thrown. The, the replay booth kind of alerted them to the, the, the foul, huh? Well, we, we didn't necessarily alert them to the foul, but we wanted to stop the play to review it anyway, just to say that it was illegal because he propels the ball forward towards his own goal line, which is obviously illegal. It's a legal forward pass. And now a sack of Grothy. On first and long, it'll be second and longer. Courtney Green, the free safety. His first sack of the season. Green did his job at the right angle of approach to Matt Grothy. This is how you're able to come in and to keep Matt Grothy from doing the flutie move and getting to the outside. <laughs> he did a great job of staying upfield. I thought he was going to lose contain. I thought Grothy. Grothy was going to make it around that corner, did a great job of staying upfield and hanging on. Way back at the 35, it's second and 31. Grothy has some room. Gets a block, lowers the head, gets right to midfield as another flag flies in. Brendan Renkert on the stop. You said this had been a very clean first 23 minutes of the game. Now the mistakes starting to pile up, and Levitt is hot. Oh, oh. <laughs> Talk about intensity, huh? Holden, number 11 offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. You got Marcus Edwards, the receiver downfield. He said, You gotta be kidding me. That's a mad guy. Well, the visor's already gone, the headset just went. He's got a real wrinkled up hat all the time. <laughs> it doesn't stay nice and pressed. He's good buddies with Bob Stoops, and I see a little Stoopsy right there in that stalking of the sidelines. Marked it from the spot, so it's second and 26. It's complete over the middle. Courtney Denson crosses midfield. Let's get back to Reese in the studio. All right, Chris, coming up on the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report, Joe Torre rejects the Yankees' contract offer. Steve Phillips will join us to talk about that. Jeff Jagodzinski has an undefeated team. The Boston College head coach will join us live to talk about the Eagles' quick start and what lies ahead for them. And also, Robert Smith, Mark May will be here. We'll break down everything from the first half of college football. Coming up your way. Look forward to it. We'll see the B.C. Eagles a week from tonight at Virginia Tech. Brophy has plenty of room. Nothing but artificial turf as he takes it's a right turn. Runs out of bounds at the 31, but the 18-yard scramble gives him a first down. The whole strategy and philosophy at Rutgers defense has been this week to funnel everything back to the middle of the field. 
and there is nobody in the middle of the field. Once they funnel, Grothy's there by himself, and you can't do that. Well, Rencart 47 was the guy that was supposed to fill that lane and be there, but he wasn't up tight enough, created too much space, Grothy taken off and run. Every time Rutgers has blitzed him, I think their, their option is what they're thinking is, more rushers contain him better, but he's still. We heard him all yesterday, Doug. Talking to Shiano all day yesterday preached on containment and and spying with somebody different all the whole time. You can't. There's no way with Grothy that you can allow that to happen. Once again, Grothy the leading rusher on this team with 55 yards tonight. This is Williams spinning for a short game. Kevin Malist on the stop. When you actually talk about the passing game. Rutgers has had some free rushes. They're blitzing more than can be blocked. The ball should come out in rhythm. The quarterback should go back, hit that foot, take his read and deliver. Grothy's not doing that. He trusts his athleticism and just avoids the rush, gets the heck out of there and makes big plays. You can relate. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> Grothy fires downfield. Good coverage. Amari Jackson didn't have any room. Jason McCourty combining with Green. But I'll tell you what he's really good at not doing is making mistakes. You know what, if he's going to throw the football, he's going to throw it where his guy can catch it and give himself another play. They had the reprieve on the big long run there by Grothy to keep the chains moving. He's avoided mistakes for the most part this season, only three interceptions. That was a problem last year. He had 14 picks as a freshman. Run up a lot as a quarterback in the year. Pressure here just fires low. It's caught short gain as Williams goes above the rug to make the catch in front. Courtney Green came around to deliver the pressure. And he came wide, didn't it, Doug? I mean, you could see that contained him here. And they've got to really be concerned about trying to get points off of that blocked field goal that they had. They've got to get points off of it. Glenn Lee, a safety, actually came from a corner position off the edge from the from the short side of the field and almost got there. They're pressuring Grothy. Any opportunity they get, they want pressure on the quarterback. So now Alvarado from 45 yards. Well in his distance. He hooked it. So replay takes the touchdown off the board. Levitt's team comes up empty after the block field goal attempt. Let's go to Aaron. All right, Chris, thanks so much. I'm here with Mets third baseman David Wright. And before we get to football, let's get to the big story here in New York concerning the other baseball team, the Yankees. What was your reaction when you heard the news about Joe Torre today? A lot of the players on the Yankee side that have come out and defended Joe, I have a lot of respect for. Uh, veteran players so uh, the few times that I have had a chance to, to speak with Joe he's, he's been awesome I have the utmost respect in the world for Joe so I'm happy for him that he's doing something that he wants have you spoken to any of the Yankee players today since the news came out no not since the news but uh, you know I think that they're rallying behind Joe which is great we kind of went through a similar situation this year with Willie and it was good to see the players rally behind the manager Obviously, I know you're a big fan of college football is why you're here today, but a big Virginia Tech Hokies fan. We're going to let you uh, give it to Doug Flutie here. We actually have the Hokies taking on BC in Blacksburg next Thursday night. What do you think of that matchup? BC is not going to the Blacksburg and winning. That's for sure. Uh, it's going to be crazy down there. Hopefully, I can make that one. Uh, you know, now that Virginia Tech's out of the, the Big East, uh, I guess I'll be a Rutgers fan. So uh, I'm a Hokie fan at heart, but while I'm here in New York, I'll root for the Rutgers and uh, the Big East. All right, David, thank you. All right, Aaron, all right, I hear you. Right. He's going to follow don't... us around on Thursday well, night. You're not allowed to go to Blacksburg and win, and you're not allowed to go to where? The swamp down there in Florida? Right, you're Doug, gonna you're going to learn these to things. When you see Blacksburg, okay. Blacksburg's one of those places where when you go in there, right. David Wright's right about that one for sure. Okay. But if there's one quarterback <laughs> that can do it this year, it's Matt Ryan. Matt's been playing team. really well and leading that team. He's been amazing. There's a catch by Britt and then a catch by Kevin Brock, the tight end, for a first down. Inside of 40 seconds and a half, and Teal takes a shot downfield, looking for Britt overthrown. Nate Allen in coverage. So, a couple of short completions, and then Knights take a shot downfield before halftime. Well, the clock's running down a little bit. 34 seconds left in the half. You'd like to take a shot at score and get in field goal range, maybe. <laughs> you don't want to have to punt the football, though, before half. So well, they had a field tick, goal block. Tick, 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 yes. Yeah, they're out of timeouts, though. They, right, they exactly. Stop the clock. Yeah, exactly. So you run the football here. 
You don't take a shot down field? I throw the ball. Well, one more maybe. Second down. You take one more shot. Yeah, just yeah then, then kill the clock. They pick up the blitz. And again, looking for Britt downfield. But Trey Williams, one of those excellent corners. One of the best tandems in the country on the edge. And see what Jenkins can do. And there's Williams. But on the other side of the field, Kevin Brock, the tight end, is going up the seam uncovered. The middle of the field is where Rutgers needs to attack the passing game. The corners are shutting the receivers down. They, these are some talented, talented corners. And now Williams third and, and ten, they do have that decision. You talked about Craig. They can run the ball here, and with the Bulls out of timeouts, just kill the clock into halftime. Let it run on into the halftime here, and be very fortunate. Then you know they are. Screen block field goal. How about a screen? Doug. How about something safe? You, would you want to have to punt? No, I want the first down. Underwood in motion. That's very safe. They hand it to Rice. Rice into the secondary. Rice barreling ahead to the 42-yard line. And now they'll stop the clock to move the chains. Okay, there's the first down. Now let's go. Now you're in business here. Spike the ball and huddle up. Talk about it. They don't need much to get in the range of Jeremy Ito. Ray Rice, That's another you know. seven eight yards guys. Don't, don't you think he just goes to huddle sometimes and say what are we doing messing around. Why aren't we just giving me the football. Well in this situation there's not enough time to, to give him the football. On every he said play. 21 carries but in I the mean, first half James. What do you want. 21. It ain't about me. How many Ray last Rice. Week, how many last week. 36. 36. 21 so far in the first. 57 carries so we got to add the two games up in what five days six days that streak's going to come to an end and, and six more yards rice will be at the hundred yard mark and again his 202 yard game against the bulls last year 14 games ago the last hundred yard back so he'll get that streak but right now you're thinking about field goal range you don't get the first down however the clock will not stop teal fires downfield puck Sliding out of bounds is Tim Brown. And now they're well with the Nito's field goal range. Completion in front of Trey Williams for 20 yards. This is how quickly a game can turn around. You have a blocked field goal. You get lucky and get a points off the board. Now, do you get greedy here, which is what Jeff Tedford did for Cal, and it perhaps cost him a game. Well, we had an outside throw there. Right, no timeouts. You got no timeouts. If he gets dropped, it's going to be a hurry to try to get the field goal team on. Teal. Fires in the end zone. Got a man. Caught. No drops. Kenny Britt laid out. Thought he had it. Defended by Williams. Could not come up with the ball. Well, so much for that theory there, Flutie man, about not going to the outside. Oh, Car hey, Williams, he better rethink how he's going to cover these guys. Well, Brown turned Williams around on that little out corner route. Now they blow by him Woo. with Britt. And boy, that was close. But now, Chris, you're on to something here. Be careful Do with the clock. Make sure you don't give up a shot at three points. Do Wait. not get tackled short of a first down in the field of play. And if you do, run up and try to spike the ball. Don't try to run that field goal team out. Pressure. Teal fires. No flag. Uncatchable Jenkins on the coverage. That was a bit of a gamble by Shiano. They said that ball is caught in the field of play. They would have had to hustle down there, try to spike it. Now they'll bring out Ito with 11 seconds to go. That's an excellent job in a two minute scenario, especially with no timeouts to get the ball down inside the 25 and give yourself a good opportunity to get through. This from 40. Ito reliable. His last attempt, low, of course, was blocked. Gets this one away. Chopping wood, of course, is the motto here. Now we'll keep chopping for the full 60. Chiano knows that's what it'll take. Jim Levitt said he fully expects this game to go down to the last couple plays as well. Well, he, he knows that this is a game on the road against a Rutgers team that's used to playing in a game like this now. And what a scenario for Levitt. He's, he, he calls it the situation. He won't admit it that it's you know, the number two team in the country. Don't even talk about that. Well, the, the bottom line is it doesn't matter. It, it, your focus, if, when you're talking about preparing for a game, it doesn't matter that you're number two in the country, number 10, number 25, unranked. You should prepare the same way and get ready. And he protects his players 
from talking about it getting wrapped up in it. It's very hard to do that, though, Doug. It really is human nature. We've seen team after team in the them. BCS era fall prey to it over the years. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a reality, man. It's like, man, when that target's on you and you're right this high. But didn't you coming. feel like after talking to the Bulls players this week, they really didn't have a sense yeah. of, of the hugeness of the situation? I think I think right now they're handling it okay. Now, if they have to do it for six more games. That's, and that's why they deserve If they do it for six more games, that's why they deserve to play for the national championship. That's the big question. When it's new to you, it's easy to be naive about it. They haven't been in this situation before. They're just having fun and playing games and winning. When, when I was back in school and we went to Clemson, everybody said, don't be out there when Clemson runs on the field and the rock and all the intimidation. We went over, we kind of packed the rock and took pictures at it and did all that. It, everything is new and fresh to these guys right now and they're enthusiastic. You see growth, these Mohawks starting to grow in there. <laughs> Ito with the square kick. Feel it and a little crease for Ryan Gillen and he steps out of bounds. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 43 of USF as time expires. Good first half. Momentum changes, big plays, and maybe a little bit more offense than most people expected as the Scarlet Knights, who had leads against Maryland and Cincinnati, but blew it, trailing at halftime for the first time this season. Two super intense coaches. Levitt and the Bulls trying to make a statement tonight. Shiano, full of nervous energy as well. 17 13 back to Reese, Mark, and Luke, the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Pressure. Grothy showing the quickness. Mike Grothy diving for the end zone. Teal will throw. Touchdown. Rifling at the Tycon Underwood. Grothy looks, fires on the slant. It's caught by Jesse Hester Jr. into the end zone. Good first half for the crucial game as we begin the second half of the college football season. Beginning the second half of this game, the number two ranked team in the BCS standing, South Florida, wanting to get out of here with a W and perhaps answer some of the skeptics, the critics that don't believe this team deserves to be ranked number two. What do you think after after 30 minutes? Well, it was a good deal. I, I thought that South Florida came out and they answered the bell a few times. You know, it's a it's a good game that they have going on. But they got to get a little bit stiffer up front on that defense because the running game at, and, Re, and Ray Rice is going to come back at him strong. Well, he carried the ball 21 times. They only ran at 22. What can they do to stop Rice? They got him to go east and west a few times, but he also had some yards on the outside. But this is a defense that has to really pick it up here in the second half. And it's going to open up Mike Teal. Mike Teal's got to get better. You know, Mike's got to play like they thought he was going to play in this game and throw the ball more efficiently. But it's Rice Ramoni, man. Hand it to Ray and let him go. He's six yards short of 100. That would snap the streak of 14 games where no opposing rusher has reached that mark against USF. But... The USF defense has six tackles for loss in this game. And they're one of the best in the country at producing negative yardage plays out of their opponents. Third best in the country. You can see how they've done against the top rushers. Slayton held a 54. White knocked out of the game by a helmet on the thigh. Smith stuffed last week. Now Rice has been productive, but it's taken him a lot of carries to get those yards. You think that bothers him, though? I don't know. We'll see if he can hold up, man. He, I know he's one of the toughest dudes in college football. You compare him to Mike Hart of Michigan, who, who seemingly can go on forever. But there's a limit off a short week and 36 carries on Saturday. Will he have that same? <laughs> you're talking to guys. I, you're talking to guys who got a lot of scars on my body. I know it's the yeah, shortest day. Dreamed, you would have dreamed of 36 carries in a Ooh, game. Man. I don't know that I'd have wanted 36 carries in a game. When you were in college, you would have loved that money. That many carries. That money. <laughs> That's right. He was at SMU, wasn't he? Oh, come on. Man. Love that money. <laughs> now they've got Jerome Murphy, the Jersey guys from. Elizabeth, he's number three. He had to sit out the first half for missing a team meeting. He was, we're told, hanging out with some family members. He's now back there as Ito boots it. And this will be Jerome Murphy, a chance to make a play in his home state. He dives out to the 29 yard line. Down to Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Well, Chris, we've seen how intense both of these coaches are tonight. Jim Levitt just as fired up when he's running out. And then Greg Schiano, I spoke with him briefly. He said the message, just keep fighting. He said no 
sense of panic in that locker room, which of course yesterday the players told us they really felt during that Syracuse game when they were down 14 to nothing. Keep in mind, they went into that game after losing two straight, down 14 to the Orange, and Ray Rice said that was the turning point when he looked at all his teammates and realized, we're going to put it together. No one was freaking out, Chris. No, they sure weren't. Defense has to do its job if Rice is going to get the ball back down just four. Well, he hammered for a loss. The Rutgers ran, guys, 17 more plays than the Bulls did in the first half, gained 20 more yards. We'll see if that takes its toll in the USF defense. Well, that's the type of offense they are. It's more of a grind them out, conventional two back, hammer, hammer, play action. Where Matt Grothy in this South Florida offense is more explosive in the plays that they make, where he scrambles and makes the big play. You saw the containment, the adjustment on the play. That exact play gained a lot of yards in the first half. Rutgers made an adjustment. Empty backfield. Five wide receivers on second and ten. Kofi. Plenty of time. Now some room. A stiff arm, but he's dropped at the 30. Good physical tackle by Joe LaFedge. That freshman safety. LaFedge does a great job of spying the quarterback. It was a two-man rush. Everyone bailed out in coverage. He sat in the middle, mirrored the quarterback, and made a great play. Well, he's sitting right here in the middle of the field. You're going to see once the play goes, go ahead and let it roll on there, fellas. And you're going to see LaFedge drop to the middle. Right here in the middle. There he is. He's coming across, and he's got the speed to get there. Bowles just one of five on third down in the first half. They rush four and a completion for an oh, incomplete. There was Amari Jackson who went low, couldn't come up with it. A three and out for USF to start this third quarter. Amari Jackson is a player that has to make those plays. Chris, I know you say when the ball touches the receiver's hands, he's got to make the catch. And this is a situation you don't want to go three and out, Doug. Absolutely not. Rutgers built a little momentum getting the field goal at the end of the half, and right away they're getting the ball back in their hands. Jackson, a very quiet night, hasn't made a catch yet. Here's the punt. Tim Brown back pedals to the 25 and makes a fair catch there. Aerial coverage today provided by the Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey Blimp. 75 years making health care work for its 3.3 million subscribers. Nice balmy night here in New Jersey. Chiano's defense does its job. And now, Speak offense goes to work. Speaking of that defense, how perfect was that play where they had the two man rush and they mirrored them with the spy? They did, and, and they used a different spy the next play on third down. The motion the fullback and hand it to Rice. Sutter steps for about four. It's a great first down game, second and six. Two, two really Chocolate. different philosophies, guys. You're Rice, the sole ball carrier, basically, for Rutgers. USF spreads it around. You never know who's going to be the go-to guy on a given night. Depends who has a high hand. Most of the offense is either Mike Teal throwing the ball or Ray Rice running the ball, so there's no surprise as to who's going to be making the plays for Rutgers. Rice still chopping for a short game. Sets up about third and four. Aaron Harris, the sophomore at the stop. Well, Shiana said we're going to get Mike or uh, Ray Rice his touches, keep him handling the ball. They want their playmakers holding the ball. Well, this is 100 yards there, and so all of a sudden that South Florida defense that had gone 15 games, right? This is the 15th game now. He was the last guy to get 100 for him, and, and he got 200, and he gets stronger in the second half. Now they may look for Britton Underwood. The two excellent receivers have had a pretty quiet night so far for Rutgers. Deal. High catch by Underwood. First down. Underwood off and running. Tyquan Underwood to the house. 69 yards. tackle by Tyrone McKenzie and all of a sudden the Scarlet Knights have the lead of the number two team.
Ito make it a three point game. He said that's the difference in this Rutgers offense this year. Playmakers on the edge and Teal able to use them. Well, you know, we said Teal had to make some plays. He gets it to the outside, to the outside, which is where Doug said, hey, we need to work the inside, the outside. Missed tackles will cost you. This game being broadcast on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro. Rutgers Stadium sold out, full of red and rocking right now as the Scarlet Knights on the 69 yard touchdown reception by Underwood. The longest play given up all season long by the Bulls. Rutgers now takes the lead. Ito, little adrenaline, boots that one to the goal line. This is Jerome Murphy. Trying to get the corner. Hammer short of the 20. Off comes the helmet. Remy Nubani, number 10, down on the hit. Kitchens is down on the play. It was about a nine yard pass. Turned into a 69 yard touchdown. Here's the big hit. Wham. Keep your head up. How do you stay on your feet when you get hard enough to pop your helmet off? Murphy a safety again having to sit out the first half missing a team meaning so eager to make a play out here on his home turf in Jersey. Larry Kitchen the sophomore the man down on the kickoff coverage. Now ESPNU all state standings once again South Florida number two in the first edition of the standings the margin not that big between Ohio State and, and South Florida guys and then the gap. A little bit bigger to BC and it drops way down to, to LSU. Well, the computers love South Florida. The computers had them up there at number one primarily on their wins at, against West Virginia and Auburn. And you agree. Well I agree with it at this point in the season. Now their schedule the rest of the way may not be quite as tough although they have some tough matchups. I get Cincinnati and Louisville. Cincinnati and Louisville Tampa. still. Yeah. yeah I tell yeah. you what and you know what you circle the wagons about that one at, at Syracuse. In between, that's the one I'd worry about if I were a coach. You would? Absolutely, man. Going into that dome and <laughs> playing in between. Well, seriously, think about you know it. You're what, playing Cincinnati you know and Louisville, and you got to go you in credit. between. You did say uh, weeks ago that LSU needed to watch out for the game in Lexington. I'll give, you did say that was the sandwich game, and not many of us thought that would be where LSU tripped up. I'll give you credit for that. I think it's more of a reach. On Syracuse. To count on the Orangemen. I'm not saying it's not good. <laughs> it's not good enough. But again, it's following a Cincinnati team that's very tough and physical and can yeah, challenge yeah. them and yeah. maybe I hear get worn you. out that week and the next week you get upset. That's your theory. Hey, fellas, they got to get out of Piscataway exactly. with a victory. <laughs> that is the mission right now. And they find themselves behind by three. Growth, he's got it. Short game. And the Scarlet Knights defense, a proud unit. Very complex schematically. Confused a bit in the first half themselves. You like the adjustments you've seen in the third quarter. The corner's coming off with a passion to the quarterback when he sees the run. When he sees that quarterback read, run, draw, the corner has got to get in the running lane. And he gets there quickly to close that gap so there's not a lot of space to, to, be, to have a move put on him. Five receivers for Grothy. Fires downfield. It's caught. And a spin away from the tackle with the 32 yard line is Dontavia Bogan, 11 yards. Brophy's ability to throw the football from any position amazes me because he throws it accurately. Earlier we saw him kind of off balance and dart one into the middle for a short completion. This one he's on a dead run, but not, he never gathered himself. It was a full stride. A little adjustment here right now. Up tempo, get the offense going. Jamar Taylor is the back next to Brophy. He's got it. Let's go to Aaron. News on an injury in the field, Aaron. Chris, it's for USF wide receiver Taurus Johnson. He is out of the game with a shin injury. And remember, we were told by the coaches he is the one guy that makes the most big plays for USF on this offense. So a big loss there. He's a leading receiver. There's the leader of the offensive line. The right tackle, senior Walter Walker on the field. The only senior in that starting group up front for the Bulls. Right side here, 75. Oh, man. Oh. Yep, yep. 
Mm. That could boy, that hurts. Your teammate rolling well. that knee. You get those yeah, big yeah. linemen up there. They got 300 something pounds, and then they, they're all on one leg and all the pressure. And could be an MCL when it's hit from the outside like that. It pushes the knee in, and potential to tear the the, the pain. Leg. And Walker banging his head back on the turf there. So 335 pounder. They're trying to help off. Week from tonight, similar situation. You got a top three team in the BCS standings, undefeated Boston College, visiting a very hostile house. Can Matt Ryan and company get it done against that Hokies defense in Blacksburg? Can the Eagles emerge with their national title hopes alive? Uh, Virginia Tech's playing much better football right now than they were early in the season. Tyrod Taylor has sparked them, although he's been a little banged up of late. Have to see the status for Taylor. He's got a week to heal, and they hope he is healthy. On second and eight, Murphy uses that fishtail escape again and fires downfield into traffic incomplete. Too high for Bogan. Yeah, next Thursday night, Boston College, you know, the eyes are on South Florida right now and having that high number three on their chest next week. What the Blacksburg is going to be a challenge. Well, if Rutgers can hold the lead, pull the upset, BC will climb, of course, even higher. They're idle Saturday, getting ready for that game, as the Hokies are, too. BC just feels like they keep moving up by default. They have been. They haven't done a whole lot in recent weeks, yet they've climbed way up into the top five. You're right about that. Both on third down. Yes, to just throw it away. And Rutgers defense. A lot more stout in the third quarter. Jonathan Freedy was there on the pressure. Just a great job of pressuring the quarterback consistently. And Grothy, he escapes. I mean, he's not even looking at the rushes coming at him. He slide steps, he fish hooks it. He does what he has to do. Containment's the deal, though. Containment right now. And Rutgers and Greg Schiano made the adjustment, and they're not going to allow Grothy outside. They're going to keep a spy on him every play. Tim Brown back to receive Alvarado's punt. Once again dropped and recovered by USF. A flag is down. Did they get too close to Brown, the returner? The flag came out very quickly. I didn't think so. There was no there a signal yet? Had adventures on those attempts to receive a punt by the Scarlet Knights. Tim Brown, who muffed one earlier, resulted in a USF possession. Ooh. This time the ball hit the ground. You know, yeah, this was a fumble punt, but or actually it's still a muff. He never controlled it. Uh, there you go. Illegal block in the back is the signal against Rutgers. Yeah, I didn't think the coverage team got too close. <laughs> he just flat out dropped the ball. Tough night for Tim Brown, the sophomore from Miami. Was there contact made? Block in the back. There's no foul for kitch catch interference. We have an illegal block in the back. Number 25 on the receiving team. The kicking team was in possession of the ball at the end of the down, so the 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. That'll get result in a first down. Nice job. So the nightmarish night for Tim Brown continues. The muff. And now the fumble and USF down three will have great field position for the penalty. Now remember at the end of the second quarter, South Florida blocked field goal, didn't take advantage of it. Right. Moved the ball down the field. They've got to take advantage of, of, of mistakes that Rutgers has. It's I think huge our... in special teams tonight for the Bulls. We'll take a break. Three point deficit for the number two team, but they've got the ball in plus territory. A winner each day at 40winners.com. Hey guys, they were out of Snickers. No! But I got these Snickers Dark Bars instead. Yay!
There's a bit of the bigger is better mentality in all of us. But what if we stopped saying make it bigger and started saying make it smarter? Introducing the Saturn Outlook crossover. With seating for eight, it's big. And with an EPA estimated 24 miles per gallon highway, it's also smart. Instead of supersized, maybe it's time for super right-sized. Just something to rethink about. Hey, are these numbers right? Yes. Do you know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're gonna have to hire more people to move into a bigger space to get those key card things. But we'll need to order a lot more Wood? Well, what if this continues? Dave, isn't that kind of the idea? Citibank Business Banking. Whatever your growing business needs, Citibank's there with guidance and customized solutions to help your business thrive. Come to City and let's get it done. What are you working for? Is it the challenge? The deal? The all day meetings? Or maybe it's all for something else. Whatever you work for, Monster works for you with powerful tools that deliver the best job match. Go to Monster today and find the job that works for you. Monster works for me. momentum was pretty short-lived. It was the second miscue on a punt return by Tim Brown, who will not win a Heisman Trophy. With that kind of <laughs> <laughs> The other Tim Brown. So USF declining that penalty, and they're set up at the 24-yard line. All right, now you got a little strategic change here. Uh, Walter Walker goes down. Jared Carr, 70, comes in at left tackle. They move the left tackle, Mark Dial, to right tackle. So got a new, there's some newness on the offensive line now, and Rutgers has to attack them. Just one first down for USF so far in this third quarter. As with the tight end comes in motion. Hand up to Jamar Taylor. No, Grothys keeps it. Grothy rocks inside the 20 by Munoz. Nice game. Go to the other side. They've been really wearing out the left side, so try the right side of this deal. And you've got Mark Dial, your left tackle, that was your starter over on the right side now, so see if you can open up the right. Munoz did a great job of pursuing and pulling down Grothy from behind. South Florida had the edge. They had numbers on the edge, and it blocked that play extremely well. Flying in to make the play is George Johnson, a rangy sophomore. Rutgers is really pressing the line of scrimmage with both linebacker depth and safeties creeping up. They are, they're asking, they're asking South Florida to throw they're, football. They're pressed up on the corners. Both corners are in the face of the wide receivers. Somebody's got to go up and take advantage of that pressed up coverage. Whistle now before this third and sixth play. Rutgers has been blitzing all night long from different areas of the field, continually trying to put pressure on the quarterback. And there, if the play clock didn't start on the play, please set the game clock to 9:09. -09. If UF USF can protect the passer, Grothy should be able to make some plays up the field. And when you look at his numbers and what he's been doing in this season now, compared to tonight, percentage-wise, he's there. No turnovers, so it's important for him. But only one third down conversion so far, one of seven. Five receivers, empty backfield. Where's the spy in this one here? Somebody in the middle of that field. Pressure up the middle, incomplete. They brought the blitz. Glenn Lee, the safety, made a beeline for Grothy. And a field goal attempt. You know how important it is to have cohesiveness up on that offensive line. You lose your start and right tackle. You start bringing another guy in here. Now you put the pressure on that, deep, that offensive line to make the right adjustments and calls. And there, they're blitzing more than you can block, but you have to block from inside out and take the most dangerous. Lee came through an inside gap and was clean to the quarterback quickly. Alvarado from 37. What? 
And Rutgers tried to knock the ball forward. It didn't work for the Bulls. Doesn't work here, but it ends up that that fumble punt does not cost Shiano's team. Devin McCourty, who made a very big play against the Bulls a year ago to preserve that victory, makes the block. I'm beating up my buddy over here saying he's going to bat the ball, and sure enough, they do. They bat it forward. And try Eric Foster there getting congratulated. Great job of a, a field goal block. Special teams in this game. We've got two blocked field goals, two fumbled punts. Middle to push, the lift, Foster from right up the middle. Big Eric Foster. I think Devin McCourty off the edge got a hand got a in there. Got a little bit too, yeah. A couple of hands in there. But special teams critical. You start evaluating the number two team in the country, you got to have all phases of the game to be number two. Well, they've been winning a special teams battle though until that play. Not tonight. Not on that one. <laughs> Not on that one. <laughs> okay, we'll give you that one. We'll give you one. This one. <laughs> Straight ahead. He didn't look tired. When you can do this, when you can go north south up the gut of a defense, there are no variables involved for you offensively. You know, the handling the blitz with pass protection and the quarterback making a read throw the ball. This is smash mouth football, and this demoralizes a defense. The funny thing is they rotate the blocking back. That was Andres Morales, 37, making a They rotate the guys throwing the blocks for the ball carrier just stays in there. And he went sideways. He led with his left shoulder. A little sidestep shuffle. <laughs> Rice again. Running through arm tackles. Ray Rice takes off. Ben Moffitt saved a touchdown at 33 yards. And suddenly Ray Rice had been a little bit quiet the last month emerging again. This would this would go down in the meeting room as a missed tackle right there. If you get your hands on him twice, you better bring him down. But that's the beauty of being a strong guy below. You know, he gets stronger as the game goes. It's that conditioning he's talking about. He mentally feels everyone else is getting weaker and he's getting stronger. Underwood in motion. Rice still in there. We'll give it to him again. And he just hammers ahead for six more. It's not like South Florida's not putting their DBs up in there either to try to stop them. They got plenty of bodies up there. What they was the expression? Bloodied the nose. Was the Bloody the nose, nose baby. And there we go. Huh? I, just, I would throw this under the slobber knocker category, fellas. This slobber. is where it really gets. You start seeing guys with green pants on with their hands on their hips. Slobber knocker. Slobber knocker. This is slobber knocker zone, fellas. 152 and counting for Rice. 26 carries. And there's carry number 27 for number 27. This time he's swung around by the safety. Allen dropped for a loss. That was a different type of run, though. That was a zone run where there was no lead back on it. So you can have some penetration at the point of attack there. You could have, you can be outnumbered on that run. Let me tell you what you can't is, is you can't have no heart here. South Florida, this is where you have to recognize the defense has to step up and make the play and hold them to a field goal attempt. It's a third and six, though. It's a manageable situation for Rutgers, and this is the area where they completed the short pass that Underwood broke. Knights have been good in this situation all year. Bulls bring the blitz. It's complete. Underwood. Touchback. High one. Underwood. First and goal at the six. And now flags come out. Five of them. Greg Schiano said he wanted to have a chance to have double moves. Watch the double move. Boom, boom. Beautiful. That's an inside toast, Doug. <laughs> Little juke move there over the ball, and it's the third <laughs> manageable situation. <laughs> that was the old juke route. That's what we call it. Aaron After won't have play, a clue. Personal foul. Late hit, number 75 offense. The play resulted in a first down. After the 15-yard penalty, it'll be first and 10. Well, they got the 18-year-old, barely 18-year-old true freshman Anthony Davis with a mental error. It was a flagrant, flagrant late hit down the field, past the runner, down around the two, three-yard line. 
He just you can't what was that phrase you used? Clobber enough. Yeah, Slobber. Yeah, yeah, you can't hide when you're this big. You just you know. I mean, how late is well, that? Wait a minute. He he tried to hold up. Oh, you know? okay. He just couldn't quite get it all to hold up with him. When you're 350, it's hard to stop that much weight in motion. He, he got he got 150. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep chopping, he said. Yeah. Forget about it. Let's keep chopping. So from the seven, back to the 22-yard line, and now another flag. That's a huge, huge mistake, though. Shiano. Prior to the snap, offsides, contacted in the zone. Number 94 defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. And they've got the backup tackle, Alan Cray, but that penalty by Davis Shiano keeping his own composure. Huge difference between me at the seven in position to perhaps go up by 10 and be backed up outside the 20. That penalty moves it back to the 18. Pretty clogged middle. He still manages to fall forward for a couple. But because it was a first and five situation, any positive yards keeps you in good down and distance. They just need to worry about converting first downs. And eventually you bump into the goal line. However, when they've been getting down close, it's been tough once they get down close. Full house and the nation watching to see if the number two team in the BCS can escape Jersey. Stay undefeated. Underwood motions. Rice shuffles straight ahead as they try to move Richard Klebert out of there again. Bruce Montmere, the linebacker on the stop. This is a place where Greg Schiano says the crossing routes underneath the draw in the middle of the field. We saw the double move, the inside toast by. Taekwon Underwood while ago. He loves Underwood coming on those little crossers and settling down at the zone and doing the double move stuff if it's man. And he's checking the wristband. And on third and three. And he's successful. As long as you, 12 on third down. As long as you stay in good down and distance, you can run all that stuff. And tight end Brock is in the slot, top of the formation. Teal takes a look there. Now fires for the end zone. And it's out of the end zone. That ball about four yards out of the reach. Tim Brown tries to redeem himself, go make a play, but Teal overthrew that one. So we'll get a field goal attempt. Trey Williams on the coverage. Kenny, he had Kevin Brock working kind of a little option route type thing in the middle of the field, and Kevin Brock created some separation. Teal came off him a little early but and put it up towards the don't, corner. Don't you the think they're the armchair quarterbacks that are sitting there thinking, hey, wait a minute, you got Ray Rice in the game. He's run downhill. All night. I like your chances better running Ray Rice. They ran him a couple of times though from first and five. So one more time, average wise, he's going to get it. <laughs> Ito from 32 for a six point lead. It's a fake. And it's caught by a touchdown. Powell of the holder rolled out and found Kevin Brock, the tight end, who released off the line. He's what a quarterback. Yep. Watched him in, in, in pat and go, sitting there thinking to Polio Attaway, you know, he comes out and has a chance. What a pass. What a throw. What a call. Gutsy call. You know, I was getting ready to say, this is kind of a risky play, this field goal thing. There's the power to hold. He's way down the depth chart as a quarterback, but a huge completion. Yeah, Ito, the punter, with a big 36-yard completion in the first half. Now you got the power of the holder in the field goal with a touchdown. And all of a sudden, number two, down by double digits, late third quarter. And Rutgers House is rocking. Anything you buy at the Home Depot could turn into four seats to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl and the NFL Draft. Buy select products and you double your entries. 
So enter today and see what happens. Only at the Home Depot. With two million vehicle listings to choose from on cars.com, you can find the right car for you. Blue is. Find the right car for you. Cars.com. Honey, are you going to keep that thing above your head the whole vacation? Yeah, I'm proud of it. I booked our package on Orbitz. I got this great hotel. I saved a ton. Well, you're embarrassing me. When I get back from aerobics, I'd like it gone. Get a great hotel and save when you customize your vacation package on Orbitz. Book now and stay a step ahead. The Shell experts wanted to prove how easy it is to earn Shell gasoline rebates with the Shell Platinum MasterCard. It's pretty easy. With the new Shell Platinum MasterCard, you earn 5% rebates on all Shell gasoline purchases. Plus, now earn 5% rebates for 60 days on your first $2,000 in purchases everywhere else. Apply by December 31st, 2007. See your nearest Shell station or call 1-877-MY-SHELL. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Saturn. With five totally new models, it's just something to rethink about. Saturn and the Home Depot. The USF really wasn't fooled, but just great execution by Rutgers on that fake field goal for a touchdown. Yeah, I was impressed with Apollo peeling out and avoiding the sack. But Murphy peels off and sees the receiver come and peels off, makes it a very difficult throw. They were not fooled on the play. It was just great execution and a nice catch by Brock. I, I thought the catch was as, as impressive as the escape and the throw. Paolo has waited a long time for a moment like that. Red shirt a couple of years ago. Basically ran the scout team. Didn't see any action last year. Special teams. He's got a quarterback ready. He's yeah, got they've a quarterback also dropped a couple punch though. It's, yeah. it's been a yeah. mixed bag for yeah. Scarlet Knights on special teams. Ryan Gilliam, short return, stopped short of the 20, and now number two will go to work down 10 as we put Reese Davis back to work in the studio. Reese. All right, Chris, Sports Center 30 at 30 update. American League Championship Series. Boston continues to hold a 2 1 lead on Cleveland. They're playing in the bottom of the six. Red Sox trying to avoid elimination. All games on ESPN Radio. Joe Morgan along with John Miller on the call there. Other baseball news Joe Torrey turns down a one year contract offer from the Yankees. He will not manage them next year. All right, Sports Center is going to start top of the hour on ESPN News. Stay current, ESPN News. Brophy a throw and a catch by Carlton Mitchell who breaks free and gets into Rutgers territory. So a first down throw. This is a gain of 33. Aaron, I, you know, this is a game where clock's moving ahead here. They're down. What's South Florida's mindset on that bench? Craig, I have to tell you, when the defense came back to the sideline, most of them were walking with their heads down and they were walking very slow. In fact, Jim Levitt ran out to the field to talk to his offense before the defense ever came back. Rothy a short completion. They go to Mitchell again. Yeah, it's pretty deflating when a special teams touchdown beats you in that way. Big difference being down 10 and just being down six. Very important drive here that they allow that South Florida defense time to sit over there and recover a little bit. And I like the fact they're attacked in the corners, Doug. That's the contain area. Well, the, the big completion came on a corner blitz. And this time, Grothy, instead of scrambling, stood there, set his feet, and hit an open receiver. And the second time on the read run, they came with a delay corner blitz because he's reading the option run. So they're still coming after him. Second and seven. Grothy flushed up the middle. Plenty of room. First down. Good downfield block as Grothy skips out inside the 25. And Tavia Bogan, the receiver there to help out his quarterback, 19 yard gain. The spy man left the middle of the field, came in hard, took the wrong angle on Grothy, and Grothy made him pay for it. 
You have to stay disciplined. You can't take a playoff against Grofey. Absolutely not. And you got to close that gap. And, and he talks about fits. Shiano talks about fits because everyone has their gap responsibility and you can't allow them to escape. Grothy's now rushed for 81 yards. By far the leading rusher for the Bulls in this game. They hand it up to Ben Williams for a short game. Yeah, and this is a new position for USF. Yes, they pulled some big wins. This big school but young football program located in Tampa. 44,000 playing the Buccaneers Stadium, Raymond James Stadium. Big East for only the last three seasons. But the difference with beating Auburn on the road early and even West Virginia at home, you weren't number two in the country. Rothy fires from the sidelines. Overthrown, looking for Mitchell. But you mentioned Auburn, and that, that's really what South Florida has to fall back on. And remember that on September the 8th at Auburn, they yep. had a game. They were down. They had to fight around in there. Yeah, they had missed a bunch of field goals early. Three of them clawed back, forced overtime, and won it. And remember, guys, this is a familiar position for Rutgers as well. And their two losses, Maryland and Cincinnati, both times led by 10 points. They gave up second-half lead. So you know that's what's going through the minds of the guys in red right here. Third down's been a big trouble spot for the Bulls and Grothy tonight. This time, he stands and delivers a first down strike to Edwards. Good throw in traffic for 14 yards. Grothy's down by 10 late in the third quarter, and he's made three or four huge plays first in this drive. There's that ball game at Auburn, and that's why they are number two, as you said. But this is a, I, I, this is a little different deal. They're going to get the special teams going. It's all phases. Offense has to make some plays. Grothy's the guy that usually makes it for them. So far, a very good answering drive for the Bulls. And Grothy, scampering, cannot escape. Brandon Rinker, and the jersey wouldn't let go. Rinker's the player who lost contain and had the bad pass rush angle that gave Brophy the last run. That time wasn't going to give up any cloth, was he? But again, it's a, it's a matter of numbers. I mean, every down, Rutgers is bringing six guys because they know if they only rush four, Brophy's going to get away. They sacked Brophy three times tonight. On second and 16, the pass is broken up. Off the edge. Go LeFedge. Pressed into duty tonight because the veteran safety, Ron Geralt, still can't go. LeFedge has had some plays where he's looked like a true freshman and he's had some great plays too. He's got he's got a lot of upside, and the coaching staff has a lot of confidence in him. To have him in a game like this here, to get in that passing lane. Hey, your, your man growth, he's got to move and, and get the ball delivered to the flat. Yeah, you got to try to find a window, whether it's sidearm it over his head or something, try to get that done. But they're forcing Grothy to make great plays every down. There's no easy completions here for him. Converted a minute ago, but now it's third and 16. Pressure again. Fire over the middle. Tried to squeeze it in there to Bogan. Courtney Green says, I almost had that one. Again, here comes the pressure, and LaFedge undercuts the receiver, and he wanted the ball. Oh. Well, <laughs> how about, how about your, re, your receiver, Bogan? I think breaking off of his route, he got to go stay in there and go get the football. Did too. he pull away from the hit a little bit there? I think he, he heard the alligator hollering. Alvarado just one of three tonight. Missed from 34 yards. I blocked the last one. They came off the edge quickly again. This time he gets it away and makes it. So Levitt's team answers the fake field goal touchdown by the Scarlet Knights with a three-point drive. Got it to a one-possession game late third quarter. We had the clock on that snap to the foot hitting the leather. It was 1.06. That's pretty darn quick. That's getting it off. Our That's spotter Mike quick. Black is an ex-field goal kicker at Boise State. He always has his stopwatch up here. Did you approve of that? Is, is 1.06 so going to work for you? Okay. One, two or less, and you're in good yes. shape. What, 06 is pretty darn quick. Wow. <laughs> I was a holder for many years, and that's fast. 
I used to be a holder as well, and I, and I can always remember these kickers coming in. Can you hold the ball a little bit like this? Oh. Lean it to the inside oh. a bit, and I, and I, especially in training camp, dude, tilt, tilt the it, ball, tilt it towards you. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit forward rather than back, or someone to just a touch back. Someone, the laces have to be out. Yep, Finkel will tell you that. So, but. <laughs> But the centers, I'll tell you what, especially at the professional, centers are so precise now that the majority of time as a holder, when you catch that ball, you just got to put it down because those laces are forward as you catch it. They have figured out the rotation. Well, the perfect season is intact for now, but the Rutgers lead cut to seven, 126 to play in this third quarter. Now Rice and company go back to work. Adventures continue. Townsend picks it up on the bounce. Has some room around the corner. Townsend breaking a tackle. And the special teams plays continue to be huge. Momentum switching right back to Rutgers after Townsend's long return. We'll check back with Reese Davis. Chris, this week's AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week is Chad Hall of the Air Force Academy. He carried it 31 times for 256 yards and four touchdowns in the 45-21 win over UNLV. You can text the word vote to 87654 on your AT&T wireless phone to vote for the AT&T All-America Player of the Week and also enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Please, thanks. Anything else happen on special teams tonight to spice this thing up? Knights take over in plus territory, F7. And the busy tailback. Bounces it. Ooh. Ray Rice saw some room in front. Bowie got him just by the ankle. That was almost out the gate right there. But when you talk about the special teams, this has been a night of adventures. And this was in the first quarter, the fake right fake away. Punt. That set up a field goal. Here's the fake field goal for a touchdown with DePaolo, the backup quarterback, finally tight end Brock. Those have been the plus plays, but they've also <laughs> muffed a couple of punts. We've had two field goals blocked, one for each team. It's been interesting in that big return. Rice again. Having to earn a yard the hard way there. Rice the ball here. Every bull defender is within seven or six yards of the line of scrimmage trying to stop Ray Rice and he still managed to get four yards on first down. They're only a yard. Well you know they Wally Byrne on the defensive coordinator. He says that they're very good. They can run the grass. They can run the grass. Well they hadn't run the grass enough tonight against <laughs> Ray Rice. It's not a matter of running the grass right now. It's just <laughs> stuffing it. Well notice he's been right at the middle. Nothing to the right. Very little to the left and 122 yards out of his 157 between the tackles. North. Between the tackles, between the hashes. His lead blockers have been getting to work out. John Bellinger, the fullback, slow to get up. Now makes his way to the sidelines. They just keep rotating the fullbacks at 27. <laughs> just stays in there. Keep giving the ball to 27. <laughs> Interesting call now. Clock winding down in the third quarter. And it looks like Teal will be content with just visit with Shiano. Throughout this break, 15 minutes to play. USF, if they're going to keep the perfect season alive, will have to mount a rally in the fourth quarter. Rutgers has had trouble trying to hold leads this season. 15 minutes to play. Will we see another highly ranked team beaten by an unranked team, or can Grothy engineer a comeback? Football like ESPN.com. Think about it, Frank. Hold on. I'm a salesman. I work in Virginia, but I do business in Colorado. The pocket's jam. It's a hydraulic issue. Sacramento. Roger that, 790. Roger that, 790. Fly me in a little lower. Request permission for lower altitude recon. Flagstaff. In San Antonio. So I need a network that works where I live. A place called Virgicalamento Flag Antonio. Frank, I'm back. The new AT&T works in more places like Virgil Colomento Flag Antonio. What if we took a moment to rethink our priorities? What if we rethink power and what it means to be strong? 
What if we rethink beauty and what it means to truly interact? What if we took the time to realize that our neighborhood is actually much bigger than we think? At Saturn, we chose to rethink things. That's what makes us who we are, who we've always been. We chose to create two of the most affordable hybrids in the country, making it much easier to drive responsibly. We rethought what it means to be protected by offering a 100,000-mile powertrain warranty on all of our vehicles. We even rethought every car we sell, now offering five totally new models. Yeah, we may just be a car company, but we're rethinking what a car company can be. Just something to rethink about. What's the difference between having fun and having none? The Midas Touch Maintenance Package. An oil change, tire rotation, and 45-point courtesy check. Just $29.95. Be safe. Trust the Midas Touch. Over 800 million people around the world go to bed hungry. Join the movement to stop world hunger by supporting the World Food Program. To learn more, visit our restaurants during World Hunger Relief Week or go to fromhungertohope.com. I started this company with nothing. My parents gave me encouragement. That was all they could give me. Now this company is who I am. And it'll help me deliver on a promise I made to my daughter to help her start a company that would be who she is. At John Hancock, we have the insurance, investment, and retirement products to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've promised yourself. John Hancock, the future is yours. With just five races remaining, it's all on the line this Sunday at Martinsville. Jimmy Johnson and Tony Stewart chased Jeff Gordon to keep their championship hopes alive. The Subway 500 at Martinsville, Sunday at 1 Eastern on ABC. Later on SportsCenter, Joe says no. What's next for Torrey and the Yankees after today's shocker? Why one guy says the Jets have to bench Chad Pennington now and complete postgame coverage of Red Sox-Indians Game 5. SportsCenter after the game. Well, the largest crowd in Rutgers Stadium history. 44-267, breaking the record of... Last year's visit by number three Louisville when Rutgers pulled the upset in dramatic fashion. The Scrat wondering if the Scarlet Knights can hold on. It's been a problem area for this team. They begin the fourth quarter with a third and six. Teal, short delivery incomplete. Tried to find Kenny Britt over the middle. Good coverage. They like those crossing routes, but they haven't been very successful. The Bulls obviously aware of Rutgers' tendencies. Yeah, Mike, you has to be a little more patient on that and let him try to pass that linebacker and get out the back door. It was well covered. And yeah, Mike's only 11 of 26 now. But when you keep from turning the ball over and run Ray Rice, you're getting it done. Ito. Boots it in line drive fashion, a risky fielding of the punt by Marcus Edwards, and he's hammered at the 10. No fumble. The ball is down. USF will have possession, but not very good field position as we check back in with Reese. All right, Chris, we honored Chad Hall of Air Force as the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week. I should have said his big game came against Colorado State, not against UNLV. Glad to make that correction. Coming up top of the hour over on ESPN2, David Beckham. He's had the gimpy knee. He is available to play for the Galaxy against New York Red Bull. It's coming up next on ESPN2. Okay, Reese, thank you. USF down by seven. Takes possession on the 13. Ben Williams is the back. Both he keeps it. Brophy continues to find room up the middle. 12 yards. Well, that was the first defensive snap for Rutgers that they didn't blitz or bring anyone. They just took up with the four-man rush. Brophy was able to read it, take it up through the middle, and have a, a good positive game. Well, for South Florida, you see here, the first time trailing after the third quarter this season. And that really, this team is built around Matt Brophy making plays with his legs and his arms. He's always seemed to make the play to get him back in, into the contest. 
Okay, tip at the line, a diving attempt with the catch by Amari Jackson. Now it's Silvestro, the freshman defensive end from South Jersey, got a hand on it. Part of the rotation. They use lots of people on the defensive line, keep fresh bodies in there. And they went back to their blitz idea and got more pressure on him, got the hands up and get a tip ball. But Grothy has been making plays. They got down by 10. Last drive, he made three or four huge plays to get him down a field goal range. And he started this drive with a nice run. We said in this game, Grothy would have to equal Rice for Rutgers if they were going to win. Grothy has plenty of time. Now pressure comes. He can't get away. Eric Foster, the fiery, vocal senior leader of that defense, sacks Grothy, a fourth sack for Rutgers. You saw him with the chop. Foster is an intense, very polite young man, but to the point. You've got to play the entire snap, and against Grothy, use your eyes and be at him. And he's the guy that told us, listen, a lot of these younger guys, inexperienced guys, they don't remember how hard we've had to work to get where we are. They've let down maybe in the fourth quarter. We've had to leave. He says, not going to let that happen again. Third and 18. They only rush three. Grothy, sacked by a three man rush. Jamal Westerman got him. But again, it was LaFedge with the spy. It was only a two man rush, and he just mirrored the quarterback the entire play. They finally decided to close the gap and come after him, and they get the sack. Well, Fantastic job, scheme-wise. Guess what this is, Chris? A special team snap. Look out. You never this know what to expect. This could be fun. Alvarado. Low kick. Fair catch. And a hit after the fair catch, and that'll draw a flag. They replaced Tim Brown. They had the two miscues back there with Dennis Campbell and Ryan Gilliam for the Bulls came up and popped him. Well, they didn't disappoint us. They did something. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Almost every special teams play has brought some kind of little special wrinkle. That's that big. flag will move the ball across midfield, though. Levitt just shaking his head. Hey, part of handling the pressure, the spotlight, big games is not making mistakes. So you have made all year. Result of the play is a fair catch. After the fair catch, personal foul, late hit. Number two in the kicking team, 15 yard penalty, first down record. We think that he met 22. And we've talked about the misadventures. Brown mishandling a couple of punts there. Rutgers able to block a field goal after that didn't cost him anything but he's replaced by Campbell and Campbell popped 15 yards puts the ball at the 39 of the Bulls as Rutgers tries to build in a seven point lead crucial series for this USF defense guess who Gary 31 for Ray Rice. You figure if you give the ball to the guy three times in a row, he's going to get 10 yards. His average suggests that three times five or more is beyond the chain. SMU math. That works every time. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's a holding penalty? It's worse when you know what's coming and you have a hard time stopping it, huh? Yeah. Now Rice motions out, empty backfield. Teal in the gun on second and five. Short flip right into traffic. Britt had nowhere to go, even if he caught it. Ben Moffitt, good job clogging up the play. Moffitt read it extremely well and just busted that whole play up. Again, you're talking about a game Saturday and now one Thursday, so five Three. days later, a combined oh my. Like, that's 68 a, carries. That's a season of carries. <laughs> Craig, you were a third down guy after a while, weren't you? I, <laughs> so I you carried twice a game. Wait, math on that's 358, isn't it? 357. What was the? You weren't paying attention. What, yards? Yeah. Yeah. But I was looking at the carries. That's that's the important thing. The, the beating that he's taken. On third down, they flip it short. It was behind Tim Brown. What? Did it ever occur to you though that Ray Rice might be providing the beating? Yeah, after the first down gain, they throw it twice, two incompletions, and a real chance for Rutgers to do some damage here. 
Now it's going to be a, a long field goal attack. The intensity of these coaches. Jim Levitt. And Shiano. Yeah, it, went, it was an incomplete pass. They're getting off the field. They're making them kick. He doesn't care. Somebody did something wrong. This is big. Ito, two yards short of his career long, tries from 51 for a 10 point lead. It's a low kick. Good. A line drive. Puts Rutgers up by 10. Keep chopping, that's the motto. One eleventh chop. Each man, a component of that. That's all they ask. Good. And they delivered. Just do your job and nothing more is the one eleventh thing. You don't have to do more than your job. The South Florida team, they're asking Grothy to do more than just his job. They expect him to go over and above. This Rutgers team, you take care of your responsibility and together as a group, we'll get it done. And we'll see if Gilliam or Murphy can produce a return here. This is Murphy. Lowers his head and pulls to the 30. Now the Bulls. 11.53 to work with. Once again down by 10. EA, what's going on with Grothy on the sidelines? Is he ready to get after it or what? You know, it's interesting. I've been observing him for about five minutes now. The guy's facial expression hasn't changed a bit. He just looks calm, cool, and relaxed. He isn't walking around pumping up his offensive line or talking to his receivers. He's actually kind of been a loner on the bench, been by himself. You just wouldn't think that the number two team in the nation was down when you look at his facial expression over here. Even his dad, Matt, said he <laughs> is amazed by his son's composure. Nothing rattles him. But this is a big challenge on the road. Rutgers crowd roaring, and it's Ford taking his turn to tail back. The youngster has had a quiet night hammered down after a two yard gain. Brothy we talked about his planned bow hunting trip in Ohio. There except to the long snapper they're going to fly home tonight. 10 o'clock tomorrow morning head back up to Ohio and go hunting for deer. And Matt was very much excited about that. I think that took a, a slight back seat to the football game perhaps this week. And what got him going as a, a Scarlet Knight player is down on the field. That's Courtney Green, the safety. Grothy likes his, his hunting and fishing. His dad said, didn't get that from me. I I like fishing okay, but, but Matt is passionate. And on the bye week for the Bulls, he took the boat out. Tampa Bay, you know, fishing, fishing. for whatever he catches. Yeah. yeah. He didn't watch any football. He's just an outdoors guy. Asked for a BB gun, got one when he was around six years old. You know, that's you know young, huh? BB gun really kind of gets you going now. You know, that's where you got to lob one in there to hit your target. You just go squirrel hunting and bird hunting next door to his neighbors there with a BB gun. Six, seven years old. Yeah. I, I, it's young for a BB gun in I, your I, mind? I, for me, <laughs> yes. You know, I didn't grow up that type I of hear you. If you're tuning in for Sports Center, that's airing on ESPN News with Stuart Scott and Neil Everett. Green tracks off. Second and seven. Williams replacing Ford as the back to Grothy's right. He blocks the blitz and Grothy fires downfield. It's caught. Jesse Hester Jr. taking a hit, but moves it to the 48 for a 16 yard gain. Now, hey, an observation here. It looked like he threw the ball to his receiver, not an area on that pass. Yeah, it was a little behind him. He was kind of aiming the ball a little bit on he, that. He threw it to him. He just kind of, like he just kind of give it to him there. But again, that was only a four-man rush by Rutgers. He had time to stand there, survey the field, and make a good throw. Green, the starting safety, is back in the ball game as Williams weaves his way into the secondary. 14 yards as the Bulls once again try to answer on offense. Williams is one of those guys that's relentless. You know, the reason the coaching staff likes him so much is that he just stays after it. Little chip aways at it. You know, Rutgers got to be careful here. Knights 
show pressure off the edge. Now back away. Here comes the blitz. He gets it away. Caught. About an eight-yard gain for Amari Jackson. Tampa native, his very first catch tonight. Well, that's the way you handle the blitz. He saw the blitz coming, checked to a quick route, caught the ball and just delivered it on the money. Quick rhythm. That will discourage the blitz. And, and he's really nailing home the point that EA just made that he's calm and collected on the bench, so he's seeing the game still and playing what he's doing and supposed to get it done. And off Williams falls forward. Looks like it's a first down. And the running great, uh, Craig, the running game <laughs> is what he's been missing. They've had an element now where they ran for the first down there. They busted a run just a little while ago. That can keep Rutgers honest. The running game outside of Brophy's run. Exactly. Yeah. That, exactly. He had been carrying the load. Williams now has 44 yards. First down. Brophy fakes it, throws over the middle, caught. And running free, still running free. Down inside the five yard line is Cedric Hill, the tight end, and now he gets into the stat page. His first catch of the night for 22 yards, and then Tampa, there is hope in the Sun Dome. Right side of your screen, tight end gets behind the backer. Actually, you know, you just, when you start getting out there and you're worried so much about growth, the own plays in the spy, forget the tight end. Missed tackle by Glenn Lee, Bulls first and goal. Williams hammers ahead. Check it, it's Jamar Taylor, the freshman has come into the game. Williams remained, and now they give the freshman a try, and he's stopped at the two. This is a drive that the number two team in the country is supposed to make. On the road, having to answer the call. You've really lost your momentum, and Doug, they've come out here, and they're coming down the field. They're giving themselves an opportunity here. There's still over nine minutes on the clock. Now Williams, Ford, and Taylor all in the game. It's Ford cutting back for a touchdown. Mike Ford, the freshman. So that is an impressive drive by Levitt's team, cutting into the lead. Plenty of time to play. Answer the call. 78 yards, took him less than three minutes. Now Alvarado draws the Bulls back within three. Grothy three for three on that drive after he started the second half, just four for 12. No curb appeal. Hate the color. Oh, honey, this is it. Uh, what you got there is an infestation. A lot of life happens in your car. Conoco and 76 quality ProClean gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. The pink wasn't so bad. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco and 76 quality ProClean gasolines. Get your football fix Saturday on ESPNU. At noon, Central Michigan heads into Death Valley to face Clemson. Touchdown! At four, it's an in-state battle as the Buffalo Bulls charge into Syracuse. Hit the ESPNU gridiron Saturday at noon. Home Property owners, DR's largest off-season savings are now in effect on the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. Call now and for a very limited time, you can save up to $639. Now, if you've ever tried to clear an overgrown field or ditch with a handheld brush cutter, you know they're exhausting to use. Take hold of a DR field and brush mower, though, and you've got a whole different story. The DR knocks over brush and saplings up to two and a half inches thick and chops most everything it cuts. So why let weeds and brush take over? Call 1-800-791-6198 for your free DR Field and Brush Mower catalog and DVD. There's no obligation, but you must call right now to receive our largest savings of the year. 1-800-791-6198. That's 1-800-791-6198. Online at drfieldbrush.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. 
ESPN's College Football Prime Time is presented by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar, eating good in the neighborhood, and in part by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. How would USF handle the big pressure game wearing the target? Well, as a very impressive drive by the Bulls, they reached the end zone on the forward run, cut it back to three. Now Levitt is focused on his kickoff coverage because it was James Townsend that turned momentum Rutgers way with a long return. This position a few minutes ago. This is Campbell, not, not Townsend. Campbell. Trying to turn the corner. And check it, it's number two, Tim Brown. And flags fly. Brown, the man that struggled so much dropping the two punts, this time draws a flag on the sidelines. Penalties of overaggression tonight, both sides. That one's inexcusable, though. The ninth flag. After the return, personal foul, late hit, number 22, kicking team. 15 yard penalty, first down. And they've got Ryan Gilliam. That's just inexcusable. He, he was maybe a step and a half on the white line. Anybody Pretty much a, a consensus that he, he is a I family. think we all agree. The crew likes each other. They're going to support each other. I wonder if those flags tonight, how many... Look at that face. How many how, have actually on, come out? On, well, actually on the on special teams. They don't disappoint on special teams. We're going to have something fun happen no matter what. That's the third personal foul on the Bulls. Levin's got... One of the better scouts in coaching, don't you think? Yeah, oh, right up yeah. there with Cower. He, he took Cower. Yeah. He, I think he took Cower's point. He surpassed his Cower. He went right ahead of him. Let's take it to the computers and, and see how it comes out. Big possession here for the Knights, and they go to the go-to guy, Ray Rice. Nothing. And I go for fall forward for a couple of yards. Well, after this game, all eyes on the Applebee's weekend menu. And number one, Ohio State, going to protect home turf against the Spartans. And remember, the computers don't see scores. You know, they just give credit for victories and road wins and stuff, right? Margin victory, just a W from the computer standpoint. Which is now, a joke. How, however, the voters and the eyeballs, they do have emotions, and scores do make a difference in how they vote. Well, shouldn't they? Shouldn't a one-point victory be different than a 30-point victory? Absolutely, but a computer doesn't see a score. I understand that, because the BCS made them take it out of the pocket. Margin victory. The coaches, in fact. Rice. Keying in on number 27. It's about three. Selvi and Harris combining to set up a third and about six. Well, the point that I'm really making there is if, if somehow South Florida can come back and win this game, it doesn't matter if it's by one or ten. The computers are still going to like them and give them credit for winning on the road against a decent football team. However, the eyeballs out there who are watching this game tonight are trying to see the special teams a part of this championship team. How about the defense, you know, all phases of the game. Are they really number two? Third and six. Teal has protection. And once again, he has really struggled right on those crossing routes. Kenny Britt was the intended receiver. Yeah, Britt was the intended guy, but Underwood up the field, about 10 yards further up the field, had broken off his route, was wide open. He missed. I think in these situations, he doesn't want to take a sack, make a negative play, and he's being a little careful and quick with the ball. Speaking of situation, the offense answered the call, went down the field and scored for South Florida, and the defense came out despite a bad penalty against them, and they answered the call. Amari Jackson is now back to return the punt. Ito takes a step, boots it low. Jackson says, get away from it, and the coverage team will do its job. Not much to do, just pick up the football at the three-yard line. Good job by Ito. He's had a pretty good night all the way around. Fake punt completion. Made three field goals. Another reminder that aerial coverage provided by the Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey Plimp. 75 years of health care work for its 3.3 million members. Half of the fourth quarter remaining. USF down by three, but pinned back at their three-yard line. Well, they've been answering the call. It was a great special teams play by Rutgers to pin them down. Let's see how they pick it up. The 
Amari Taylor. Two backs in there to block. Short carry. Pressing a true freshman on the carry. Aaron, what do you have? Well, what I have is the Rutgers training staff looking at Mike Teal's hand right now. It's his throwing hand. Now, remember, he's, he's been dealing with a thumb injury for the past two weeks. As soon as he came over to the sidelines, Greg Schiano looked at him and said, are you okay? He started squeezing his hand. Now the trainers are looking at it, Chris. He's missed his last five passes, and Douglas spotting some inaccuracy problems down there. Brophy from his end zone. Lost it. Downfield. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Caught. Dontavia Bogan beats one-on-one -on -one coverage. That gets a smile from the scowler, Levitt. Well, on the outside, when you've got this kind of pressed-up coverage that we talked about, then Bogan's got to make a play. On the outside, the move up the field. And, hey, how about Grothy putting it out there for his receiver one-on-one? -on -one? With an unblocked man in his face. Hung in there in his own end zone and made a very nice throw. And he got a good matchup. Zaire Kitchen is one of the backup corners, not the starter. Short carry for Williams. But again, ever since they got down by 10 with nine minutes, or actually it's about 12 to go, Grothley has been making plays to get his team in a position to win this game. That was a huge completion in his end zone. Long way to go. Williams hit in the backfield, spins away, still on his feet. And they get some red hats to him there. Pete Verdon, the defensive tackle, lost the hat. Didn't slow down, though, Tverdov. He just kept going after him, huh? That's chopping beyond the chop limit. <laughs> I think anybody in red or scarlet had a shot at the running back on that play. Criminal justice major. Williams just kept churning the legs. Big third and 11. They bring pressure. No flag on the edge. Jesse Hester Jr. Pretty well covered. Rothy trots off. Not really an answer with their passing game to the pressure that they're getting from the inside. I mean, that's just a jump ball he's throwing up there. And the one that he converted earlier was as well. But, I mean, they've got to come up with a better plan with their receivers to get a, take advantage of the press. Well, you're looking for a higher percentage type of throw if you can. You know, the bottom line, the first part of that is protection. The second part is route. And Alvarado's punt. Fielded by Dennis Campbell, and he almost dropped it. <laughs> and and Campbell's replacing a guy who's dropped two tonight. Hey, <laughs> it's got, you know, we've got to keep the fun in this. But that's why they're special oh, teams. Man. It's special. 38 yards in the punt. We've talked about the moods of Jim Levitt. He comes out fired up, running wind sprints before the game. Kickoff. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Let's go. I talked to Bob Stoops before the game. <laughs> And I, you know, Bob Stoops coached with Jim Levitt back <laughs> at Kansas yeah. State. Yeah. And I said, hey, you know, Coach Stoops, Levitt's having a good time and he's pretty intense and he laughed. He said, yeah, he is. He's very happy. Stoops is very happy for Levitt. You know what? Levitt, by the way, whose, whose team is ranked ahead of Stoops in the BCS, says, I told Bob, he's got to get his program together. Yeah. He's got to get things going down there. And, you know, if he needs some help, I'm sure he's willing to <laughs> give him some pointers. 5 12 to play. The Rutgers sitting on a three point lead. Rice. They'd love to be able to chew clock with number 27. Hats are starting to come off every play now. Three of them tonight. You know, I mean, that's a little, little popping going on down there. Zuda, the tackle, lost his helmet. Good first down gain for Rice. Last time they got five on first down, they went away from Rice. Yeah, middle of the screen here. Oh, he, uh, yeah, little hand up in the face. Well, the pop jarred the chin strap loose and the hand knocked the helmet off. That was Moffitt who had the hand up in the face mask. And again, Till's in the game, right? He was on the sideline yeah. nursing that hand, so Till's in the game. Well, Shannon would like him to stay in the game and just have to hand off to Rice if they can keep that working. Physical run. Did the ball come loose? There's a pile. Did the football come loose? The Bulls say they have it. 
that is number four, Mike Jenkins, think he knows. <laughs> Get that extra yeah. floor to football. The 35th carry of the night for Ray Rice. Produces a fumble. And the frenzy in the Sun Dome. Contrasting with the disbelief in Piscataway. As a running back, getting up in the inside the line, a lot of times you want to deliver a below, and a helmet gets on the ball, and you're thinking about it, and you can't. And Montpellier, Montpellier, he comes in and gets the helmet right on the leather. Moffitt recovered it. Third Scarlet Knight turnover. And the Bulls have it at the Rutgers 40. Moffitt's not going to let go of that ball. Flag. Prior to the snap, timeout was called by number nine offense. That is the first <laughs> charge timeout of the half. Cedric Hill, the tight end, calling a timeout. So Rutgers third turnover. Can Levitt's team make him pay? It's a fake. He's throwing downfield complete. It's a fake. And it's caught by a touchdown. Oh, the trickery tonight. You have to be here. When I signed up for Vonage, I was able to keep my phone number. And then when I moved, I was able to take it with me. Vonage was so, so simple to uh, set up. I did it on my own, and I, I was very proud of that. Call quality is the utmost. It projects my business. And with Vonage, it's perfect. Vonage and reliability. That just kind of goes hand in hand. The features save you time, and that's really where I'm focused as far as cost goes. It's made our connection that much closer. Um, I love Vonage. There's no one else out there that fills the need that Vonage does, um, and I'm a lifer. I love it. So sign up, set up, and start saving up to $300 a year on your phone bill. It's just $24.99 a month for unlimited local and long distance. Call now and get one month free, including free calls to the U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico, and Europe. Vonage, a better way to phone for less. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 19, Dick Butkus. Playing both center and linebacker, Butkus was twice a unanimous All-American selection. He was named Big Ten MVP in 1963 and was the coach's National Player of the Year in 1964. IBM, getting it done. Nice to see the countdown include some defensive players. Somebody on the Scarlet Knights trying to make a Butkus-like play, protecting a three-point lead. 4-11 to play. First down for the Bulls at the Rutgers 40. Pressure up the middle. Grothy, set. Sixth sack. That one goes to Brandon Renker, the linebacker. Matt Grothy's only six feet tall. And, Doug, I know that you, you've dealt with this all your career. And when you're behind the center and the traffic's in front of you and you're enveloped, you can't see down the field. That's when, when it's a five- and six-man rush, it looks like a wall in front of you sometimes. Here comes the wall again. Grothy sidesteps it, fires downfield, incomplete. Jesse Hester Jr. well covered there by Glenn Lee. By having to sidestep the rush, it throws the timing of the route off. The ball's delivered a little bit late, and he runs the receiver out of bounds. We haven't seen Matt run in a while, right? There's a spy waiting on him, but when you're playing in space, Matt Grothy versus a spy, I'll take your chances. Five of those sacks after halftime. Third and 15. Wobbly pass, tipped by two Rutgers defenders incomplete. 
way to leave, and then Devin McCourty each got a hand on that. <laughs> this ball kind of comes out of the side of Matt Grothy's hand. It go, goes nowhere near where he wanted it. He kind of, the ball just, he was anticipating something happened, did a clutch in his throwing motion. Three different Rutgers players had an opportunity at the ball. And on fourth and 15, Alvarado into punt. Dennis Campbell will try to just field this one cleanly. High kick. And it's a touchdown. Levitt's defense needs to get the football back. <laughs> now this perfect dream season will end right here in New Jersey. Shiano, he's still working hard. They don't quit these two coaches. <laughs> well, they don't the, slow down. Before the game, you know, we you know we love going down in the middle of the field and watching both teams. Man, the intensity of the teams and both head coaches. They wanted to put the pads on. If they had had pads for the coaches, they would have thrown them on in a heartbeat. USF has two timeouts. Rutgers has 3:21 to try to bleed. After the fumble, they go right back to Ray Rice, who's tripped up. Good job by Mon Premier. Now, Craig, after you fumble a ball, do you run a little more cautious, or do you cover the ball up different? You can say that you don't, and that you just go back and you forget about it, but it's in your mind. You know, and especially right now, in the situation where they are, the worst thing that he could do is give it up again. You guys were laughing, saying that he doesn't feel fatigue, but... I don't know, 36 carries at the 36 last Saturday. Maybe the fumble had something to do with that. I think it's a valid point. Second and 10, Rice again, bouncing it, earning about two. Another big hit from Mom Premier, helped out by Trey Williams. The USF will take a timeout. They've got one left after this. Which now amplifies the importance of getting a stop here on third and eight. And you really want to hold that one in your pocket, that last time out that you've got up here, obviously to be able to try to stop the clock for a field goal attempt should you get in that situation. He just circled the ranking, but they, they, now they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's got the timeout on no, you. That yellow dot right there. But both of those are very pertinent well, right now. Well, only one's coming out on the screen over there. Oh, you can't get left enough. Okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> But well, the ranking, on the, on the you know illustrator, I circled the, the That's correct. a key thing, too, the ranking, because everybody in the country is See, looking. But you missed it over there. <laughs> <laughs> All eyes watching the number two ranked team to see if they can get out of New Jersey. Now, Teal's thumb's bothering him. The last throw, I thought he was attempting to get to the upfield receiver, and the ball just dropped short, which made you think he was going to the underneath guy. So he was that far off. You're not thinking they're going to throw the ball here. Chase the chance of an incompletion. Stop the clock, are you? Tick, 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 tick. I would run a conservative pass play and try to convert. Yeah, they got four receivers. A motion Brock the tight end and as a pass protector, and Teal will throw. They're going to take their chance. Teal fires. It's complete to Britt. A flag comes in very late. It's a first down catch for Britt. We'll check the marker. He was in the holding zone. Holding. It is a hold. It's Number coming 77 back. 77 offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. An enormous call. They get Pedro Sosa, the senior. The veteran wipes out. Would have been a first down catch. Boy, big time play by Teal as far as holding onto the ball, moving in the pocket. The hold is right in front of you. He slides and moves. It's when he broke to go away. That the jersey, the, the cloth. Good call. Yeah. Marginal call. Marginal. I thought he grabbed him, but I didn't think it was necessary. I thought Teal had escaped. USF will burn its final timeout now. It will be third and 18 at the 12. Well, they're, they're going to restart the clock after the penalty, and it forces them to use their last timeout, where if they could have 
stopped them there. They used their timeout and the ball is being punted. There's still a third down play to go and the clock will run at the end of this play. Now, I, you know, with the down and distance the way it is, third and 18, I agree with either running the ball, maybe throwing a little screener draw, something. Something to make sure high percentage. Make, make sure that run, clock run, is run, running. Run, right, right. Because you're probably And, and I think here play. also, Levitt's mindset is probably not to have a real tight clock so that it doesn't put pr pressure on growthy. But, man, the pressure right now is to hold on to that number two ranking over there. <laughs> that there it is. Man, Let's draw out The illustrator just doesn't want to let you draw on the line. That's our ESPNU oh, All-State standings. Once again, <laughs> USF chasing undefeated number one Ohio State. BC poised to play at Virginia Tech a week from tonight. And all those teams with one loss, LSU, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Kentucky, as well as Arizona State. A lot of folks rooting for Rutgers to hold on to this lead. Third and 18. Four on the play clock. It's Rice. Rice hammers ahead. USF out of timeouts. And the Knights will have to punt. He's got good distance. Alvarado's made a 56-yarder a year ago. Made a pressure kick at the end of the road game against Auburn, the overtime win, after a disastrous start to that game. Now, can the Bulls get the ball here without committing a penalty, fumbling a punt, putting the ball on the ground, and giving their offense a chance? I, you know what? I would move up here as a kick returner because Ito has done the little rollout pooch kick. I would not let this ball hit the carpet. Whistle before the snap to Ito. They didn't get it off in time. They tried to bleed the clock down. It'll cost snap. them five yards. Play a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Go oh. fourth down. Five yards. You know how that's what Shano's like. Oh, you're kidding me. That's it, big. It, it could be bigger than a field goal attempt. When it comes field goal about, time, it's a difference what? between a 60-yarder and a 55. And, and so, you know, you really think about this, Doug. You almost have to think, consider, do you want to go into a safe punt return and have three guys back to make sure the ball doesn't hit the yeah. carpet? They had three timeouts, too. They could have used one of their three remaining timeouts. Boots it high. Fair catch by Marcus Edwards. Fielded cleanly at the 49. So USF, 49 yards from the end zone after a 35-yard punt. We'll check in with Reese Davis one more time. All right, I'm live with Brian Wang, MVP of the Offside Training Seminar. Brian, how'd you get it done today? Well, staying awake during the presentation was tough, but Susie had my back, and I was able to track my fantasy players and get some pretty big alerts. Brian, where do you go from here? Email me. Oh, room 408. Accounts receivable is having after hours. All right, back to the studio. Be an ESPN MVP with Verizon Wireless. Get fantasy tools, instant team and player access, personalized alerts, and more with ESPN MVP, only from Verizon Wireless. Anything you buy at the Home Depot could turn into four seats to the Super Bowl and the Pro Bowl and the NFL Draft. Buy select products and you double your entries. So enter today and see what happens. Only at the Home Depot. Seven, Eric Foster and Joe LaFedge, the safety, a huge loss. Get out of the middle of the field. It hasn't been working. Brophy's got to move and use his athleticism to create plays down the field. Rutgers pass rush has been the story of this second half, guys, and a spike. So they waste it down, and now it's going to be third and long. Yeah, I think that's a mistake there, spiking the ball. That's a loss of a down on creating a third and 22 situation now. I think you, you, you waste a few extra seconds to get a play call and try to pick up a chunk. Now he's got two plays to get 22 yards. Go 
both he fires over the middle incomplete not an interception it was too tall for Hester Jason McCourty made a diving chance and it's fourth and 22 no timeouts left for USF this is the ball game constant theme has been pressure on Grothy bring it pressure him don't let him run around with the football and at the angle and the point of what they're going at keeping him in the pocket perfect season number two BCS ranking comes down to this play Grothy fires on the sidelines a flag down it's caught caught by Amari Jackson now we'll check the flag he pushed off what this says it was Jackson working on Jason McCourty on the sidelines. Would have been a 32 yarder. He comes back. Pass interference. Number 18 offense. Pushing off the defender. 15 yards. Penalties part of the story. That's number 10. It's the right guy to go to. Amari Jackson is a basketball player background. Big tall receiver, and the ball was thrown just beyond the first down marker, and he pushed off. Very subtle push, almost not necessary because Jackson had his sights on the ball, was in a decent position to go get it. He just barely gives him enough to create a little separation, and the ref had the call. They don't like the call on the sun, though. No surprise there. And now they'll move it back to a fourth and 37, and Rutgers will Rutgers. spend a timeout. He's going to get over and talk to him about a hook and lateral, about balls being, because you you know, South Florida can't get tackled here, obviously. So, you know, so now you coach him up defensively and tell him, play the play, keep your eyes open. Well, it was about a year ago, a little later in the season, when Louisville came near ranked number three. At that time, Rutgers also undefeated. And the Scarlet Knights rallied, held on, Ito the field goal to beat the Cardinals. This time, Rutgers comes in a little bit wounded off a pair of home losses already this season. But more than a spoiler, because the Scarlet Knights are still very much alive in the Big East race. And our Wrangler player of the game, no surprise. Ray Rice will be unhappy about that one fumble he had. Toted the rock 39 times, a buck 81. The first runner in 15 games to get more than 100 yards against the Bulls. Fourth and 37. I love to throw these jump ball type of plays into the middle of the field where everyone can converge on it. Six men standing 30 yards from line of scrimmage for Rutgers. And Grothy heaves it into traffic. Picked off. Zaire catching with the interception. The prayer not answered. The perfect season for USF dies in New Jersey, as well as their dreams of making it all the way to the BCS championship game. Levitt's group can refocus on what he called their prime goal, making the Big East title their focus. And Shiano's defense does a terrific job in the second half of adjusting. Absolutely. All the pressure they had. Shiano did a fantastic job defensively. Jim Levitt's done a fantastic job with this team. They just come up a little short. <laughs> a nightmare Special with a K. Special teams. No timeouts. Teal will just take a knee. Well, next week, Boston College at Virginia Tech. You know what? BC, again, just sitting pretty there off this weekend. Uh, shot to maybe Five. move up to number two and. And the ranks of the unbeaten shrink again for a fourth consecutive weekend, guys. A team ranked in the top five will be defeated by an unranked opponent. Now, USF was a, a narrow favorite coming in. But the top five continue to be endangered. We've got half the season left to play. Pandemonium in Pascataway, the sequel. Here come the students from all quarters. We saw it last year, when they beat Louisville. Tonight, perhaps a little bit more of a spoiler's role, but it doesn't lessen the sweetness. 
Leverett's team gave it a shot, but guys, too many mistakes for USF. Absolutely. For a number two team in the country to have the mistakes on special teams, the conversions against their special teams, a blocked field goal, just couldn't get it done. But it came down to this. Could they stop Ray Rice? Bottom line, would, would South Florida's defense be able to stand up as a number two team in the country and stop Ray Rice? Greg Schiano's bunch. <laughs> <laughs> He's, of course, the defensive coordinator and the head coach. And that defense held USF to just 2 of 14 on third down. Sack broke these seven times. And there'll be a big party in Jersey as Rutgers is still alive for the Big East Championship and that BCS Bowl bid that goes with it. By the way, the players are out in the center of the field with their fans, with their students, enjoying this win. It's a great scene. Well, again, the message across America is you got to show up and play, whether you're the you're the favorite or not. And and who is an underdog this year? You know, when do you, when can you really say? USF beaten. There'll be no ultra Cinderella in the national championship game. It appears. Rutgers does it again. Last year, Louisville. Tonight, South Florida, 30 to 27. They're getting used to the big game experience here in Piscataway. For Craig, Doug, and Aaron, I'm Chris Fowler. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, tonight, ESPN News, Sports Center up next, right now on ESPN.